And now we're ready. Let's do this. time it is now time it is the weekend after gem state or the day after gem state or whatever we're we're there somewhere in some capacity <laughs> no tuesday that's what it is and you know what that means you are now watching and listening and experiencing distance nerding <laughs> he's our dunk and the egg it should do. Uh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's Maximus Decimus Young Filius. It's Young Phil. That would be Decimus. But yes, let's, we'll go with that. And we're here I'm to doing nerd an, an, together. I, I, have, I have qualms. I'll, I'll tell you about later. <laughs> <laughs> it's Maximus Decimus Young Filius. <laughs> We're talking about anything pop culture, news, music, food, wrestling, comics, comic cons, whatever you're nerding out on. We want to talk about it. Oh, that my my my, my <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Threads, YouTube, Discord, all those places, all at distance nerding. And of course, you can email us at your favorite place, the only place. That is cool to email anybody that is at dist. So, so really, the 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 whole thing here is that in classical Latin, uh, they did not have the whole C and then the I and the E being. It's just a K, so it's just a K sound, right? And then so so I'm just pronouncing it in correct classical Latin as as the Romans of that period would have pronounced it. Uh, you know, even in vulgar Latin, it would have been oh oh. Okay, okay. It's nerding at AOL.com, and we will read it on the show. I, I dig the, uh, the 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 whole lesson in Latin. It's it's just <laughs> uh, it, it just accentuates the amount of nerd that you are. It's I it's the part of my nerdiness I don't get to use very often. So. Yeah, it's just one of those. Uh, you want to know how nerdy I am? This <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a linguistics nerd. So. And that's an awesome nerd to be. Uh, <laughs> sketchy guy in Nevada. Yes, uh, it is Cobra Commander, and I do love this uh, shirt. This actually shout out to to Tater. He he got me this shirt. Um, <clears throat> I want to say it at uh, um, at a Medford. It was one of the shows in in Medford, Oregon. Hmm. Cool, very cool. Yeah. So it's um it's good stuff, you know, you know. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into everything that we're doing, just so you know, you have now stumbled onto the best kept secret on the internet. You are now watching bum ba da bum of the download. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the download. You are here. We are here. It is time. And let's get right into all of the fun of our show. Let's get right into <clears throat> what's on deck. This week on deck, we've got the Geek End Update. The potatoes have been cooked. They have Hopefully. been. Yeah, no, they, yeah. Were, they were cooked, uh, ex except around Graveyard, but they were, they were cooked for sure. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> Lights. Camera reaction. All the Star Wars. All the time. <laughs> Starting rumors. Is the Fantastic Four leaving the MCU behind? Hmm. I wonder. And of course, capping off the show today, we've got the download. So what came first? The dunk or the egg? Um. Um. 
because I mean, it could be Duncan. It could be yeah, egg on the tar- uh, the, it could be egg on uh, egg on the Targaryen. Well, I mean, I mean, Aegon is is younger than Duncan, so so then it would be, it would it would be, be Dun- Dun- yeah, yeah, yeah. Duncan came first, right? All right. <laughs> But of course, before we get into all of that, ladies and gentlemen, let me do this correctly. But first, let me get a shout out. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're down to one sponsor, and our sponsor now still continues to be Dubby. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen. W is a brand of energy drinks created to help focus concentration reaction time with no jitters or crash. W contains no maltodextrin, no sugars, no fillers, no artificial colors or dyes. And you know what? What makes W different from all the other energy supplements that are out there, all the other gaming supplements that are out there? Let me tell you what it is. W contains Neurofactor. Neurofactor is a neurotropic derived from the coffee fruit. Neurofactor helps give your brain focus and clarity while the 150 milligrams of caffeine and three essential B vitamins help keep you alert and energized. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find out more about W, head over to www.w.gg and use the code nerding 10 to get 10 percent off your order uh flavor wise what do you think i should uh i should mix up here today well a chat what do you guys think i should mix up here today well first of all what are the options oh man i've got all the flavors so i mean oh uh james i did not do the french fry hat because like an idiot i left it here uh when i was and 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 when i told ming about it he was like, I totally would have wore that, even if I would have, even if I would have won or lost. I don't care. I would have <laughs> won. It. Wore it. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that. Ming, Ming is probably one of the most amazing people I've ever met. But uh, <laughs> flavors, flavors, flavors. Uh, all right. So <laughs> I've got <laughs> Galaxy Grenade. All I've right. got Dragonade. I've got Calio Cream. I've got Dub Sludge. I've got big energy tier, some push and punch. Uh, I have uh, Aniba Elixir, and I have Merc Mayhem. Hmm. Ooh, Cam saying right. I need to do the Merc Mayhem and the Dub Sludge. Calio and Tears, I've done. Hmm. I like the idea because I, ha- I don't think I've mixed any of the new flavors yet. So I like the idea of Dub Sludge and um, and Merc Madness. So let's do that. I'm going to do Merc Madness. One mm. scoop of Merc Madness here, which is the Cherry Limeade. Ooh. All right. And a scoop of Dub Sludge, which is a Granny Smith Apple. Ooh. And uh, quote unquote secret sauce, I <laughs> see, which I believe is more cherry. Okay, so like kind of cherry citrusy apple. Yeah, actually, kind of. It's 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 actually that sounds good. Okay, so, so some of the stuff with W, like some of the flavors that they do, you wouldn't think that they'd be things that went well together, mm-hmm. and they're amazing. Yeah, but like Dub Sludge. You wouldn't think that Granny Smith apple and cherry would be like something that's like, oh my god, that's so good. I mean, no, it, it kind of sounds good. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> or, or um, Galaxy Grenade kind of threw me off. It's watermelon, guava, and lime. Huh. Right. I mean, those those are not not necessarily odd flavors, but I mean, like that's not right. So- but you you don't immediately think of like, oh yeah, that'd be good together. You know, that's a good mix. Let's do that. Right. You know. So so that's 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 what I'm going with here today, guys move these back a little bit i want to be able to do a w cocktail 2.0 this weekend well i mean you're gonna have to get all the flavors and do that then okay so let's try let's try this out here let's see what these flavors taste like all right complete deliciousness here interesting Like, it's not bad. Nothing, nothing's ever bad in the mix here. But it almost made like a cola flavor out of it. Huh. That's that, that's an interesting mix. So I'd hate it. Gotcha. Uh, so <laughs> oh, you don't like cola? No. You're not a Coke fan? What the hell, nope. man? Nope. Not a soda person at all. Uh, 
on second tasting, it's even better. Just ignore the chip pickle juice. I am ignoring the pickle juice. I saw the pickle juice in dub. <laughs> Please tell the graphic uh, graphics department to add a drop shadow to the next or outline and create separation from the background. Uh, there is a drop shadow behind uh, that used the code nerding 10. Oh. Well, then. It's okay. He's just hating because he didn't make it. You don't get it's to talk like a really you know, like a really hefty shadow. Yeah, you you don't you don't get to talk smack if you're if you're not the one making it. <laughs> do better than than make a better one and send it to me. Do it now. Go insult your own work, James. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, sketchy guy in Nevada said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get uh let's get into the next part here because, ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. it is time. For other geek end update. This just in: disinserting is on Comic Con Radio. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, ladies, li ladies and gentlemen. Listen to disinserting and our second show. A comic conversation via ComicConRadio.com. Look for the Distance Nerding... My screen just went blank. Okay, look for the Distance Nerding podcast, including this episode and a new comic conversation each week on Comic-Con Radio, Comic-Con-Radio.com slash podcasts. Um, apparently, Shadu is not allowed to ever... I am, No, there was, you know, there was one incident, and I just have, have barred myself from it. The, the consensus is you are not no, allowed to do it? Yeah. So for the remainder of ever, <laughs> <laughs> but with that on there though, uh, ladies and gentlemen, comic conversation is coming back. Uh, I am going to be going in full overdrive, uh, with, like all the episodes that we have over the course of this next month, because I'm trying to have, um, all the gem state comic con, uh, episodes out before next month. Hmm. Uh, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, still head over to Comic Con Radio, uh, Comic Con Dash Radio dot com slash podcasts. Listen to both of our shows, uh, and and get to get that con experience, even if you don't didn't go to the show. Um, now, speaking of this weekend and how everything went, ladies and gentlemen, this weekend, because Say Wong's in the chat asking how was Idaho. I'm going to get to that right now. <laughs> This weekend, we were in uh, we were in Boise, Idaho, for oh. Ge for Gem State Comic Con, and for the first time, <laughs> history was made. Indeed, it was because I met Frey, and I met Husby, and me and Chuck are like two peas in a freaking pod. <laughs> I knew you would be. Yeah. I knew yeah. you would be. Me and Chuck are uh are, are we are it's 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 hetero man love going on between the two of us. <laughs> we bonded over the army and alcohol and it was great. <laughs> and then right. food came into play and we bonded over food. So it was great. We we, we had <laughs> such a good time. And I was not part of this. No. Uh now it was also Chuck's birthday over the weekend, mm -hmm. and we got to meet someone that he is a fan of. We got to meet a lot of people he's a fan of, but someone in particular. Uh, we hung out a lot with uh, now friend of the pod and star of comic book man Ming Chen. <laughs> and it wasn't just a, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. We are like legit friends with Ming Chen now. Hmm. Uh, I have the man's phone number. The first thing I did, first thing he did when I met him, because we had already been talking over uh, over DM. He goes, mm -hmm. he puts the face to the uh, uh, to, to to the words and everything. And the first thing he goes, "Hey, take down my number. We're gonna go out tonight." Right? Nice. And then, and then basically we were just like, oh, "Okay, cool." Um, you know, we asked. He asked us, "Oh, when are you guys going back? When are you guys going home?" And I was like, "Oh, well, we're driving up back down Monday morning." He goes. I'm flying out Monday morning. We're getting drunk on Sunday too. <laughs> <laughs> it 
it was great, right? <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I was already a fan of the guy. I am ten times more, because uh, I'm already a fan of my friends, right? But I'm right. like ten times more of a fan of the guy now that I know the kind of person that he is, and he's just. <laughs> You know, the, there was one awesome. day, there was one of these days where we fought over who was going to pay for the meals. <laughs> and he was like, you want to go halves then? And I was like, that's fine. We can go halves. He goes, all right, cool. He wasn't expecting it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so the show itself was I just, there, 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 were, there were two main headliners and then a whole bunch of just massive guests. We had Sean Astin, who... Is the most lovely man in existence. I love Sean Astin. Uh, I love Sean Astin already. I love him more after meeting him and talking to him. Right? Because the guy loves his fans so much. And he knows how to both take and dish out jokes. Nice. Right? Um, at one point, he said something. And I was like, Trust me, little us. And he goes, huh? And he looks over at me like in shock. And then starts, it proceeds to deliver Lord of the Rings lines to me. Man. As Gamgee. Man. <laughs> it was great. <sighs> you know, or uh, uh, I, I, I made a joke about, um, so whenever you go to Hawaii, do you wear a uh, mesh crop top whenever you go there now? And and from there, he, he 100% becomes Doug. <laughs> <laughs> and just starts talking Doug uh, It was great man It was so much fun um, And he told so many stories We didn't even get the chance to talk Any Stranger Things But like he, he, he was just telling stories And having a bunch of fun right So he had a good time nice. And then the next day The headliner for that day was Colin Baker The sixth doctor Who was also Massively hilarious you know, and the man was just dropping jokes and telling stories and just he was just telling all the best stories. Right. So then, you know, we also got to talk with Gigi Edgley from Farscape and talk about her career and her music and everything that she does. Clem so and talk about like just kind of uh, like starting out as a extra and then just becoming kind of like a mainstay background actor in like every movie that you've ever seen mm -hmm. brian a prince was there he we, we didn't do an interview with him but i mean as always i got to say what's up to my boy brian spencer wilding is one of my new favorite people because the guy you you wouldn't expect th th this is two times that we've met darth vader and they're both completely hilarious <laughs> right uh, he told us this story, and you guys will hear it soon uh, in the next month, but uh, he told us this story about on the set of Game of Thrones mm -hmm. um, when he was playing the White Walker. He did this whole thing where he took his sword, he jumped over a ditch, did like this whole Spartan move and everything, and he landed wrong and then just fell into the ditch behind him. <laughs> <laughs> and not only did he tell the story, but he acted it out, and it was stupid funny. <laughs> Of course, Ming was there again. You know, like I said, Ming Ming Chen. Uh, now, now one of the coolest people ever. Uh, he is one hundred percent trying to come back to more Colossus Girl shows because he had so much fun uh, doing the, the the cosplay contest that mm -hmm. he wants to do more of uh, those shows. Uh, and he was just like, and if you guys, he was telling me, he goes, if you guys are doing the um, the interviews, because he goes, you guys kick ass doing interviews. He goes, if you guys are doing all the interviews, and that just means we get to hang out like every couple of months. Nice. All right. So that's like super cool. We met Tony Oliver. Uh, this one I know James is really upset he didn't get to meet. Um, but we met Rick Hunter himself, and Tony Oliver is amazing. He is a great guy. He's really funny. Um, you know, we uh, uh, we had a good conversation with him. Of course, friend of the show, Marie Westbrook, was there. <laughs> I know, I know you're upset about that one. I, I was upset about that because I'm I'm somewhat familiar with some of her work and she seems really cool. You're, Though you're... I did I did happen to get a personalized little uh video with her from Frey. So yeah, uh, your <laughs> your mom was telling me that she got this video and you got really excited and 
<laughs> and then you got upset. And Chuck immediately goes, yeah, uh, <laughs> Liam has a type. <laughs> he goes, Liam has a type 100%. She's it. <laughs> I was like, that's a good type to have. She's hot. So, I mean, like. I have I have many types, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is indeed one of them. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we met Sam Quasman again. Really funny guy, uh, Donald Duck, um, and, and he played Little Quacker in um, in the uh, 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 Tom and Jerry series, uh, and, and the guy is just really funny, and it's funny, like, you know, uh, <laughs> we had him do a quack off between Little Quackers and uh, um, and Donald Duck, and he was like, I mean, can you guys even tell the difference between the character? Because I can't. <laughs> Yeah, he's a comedian too, so just like his comedic timing was perfect. It was just really funny. I'm gonna quack you up. No, I'm gonna quack you up. Oh no, he made he made <laughs> jokes like that. He made a joke about uh he goes, outside of this, I'm just a stripper at the old folks' home. You know, they just <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes, all, all it is is that they forget the next day, and then I get to just uh get get all the same tips the next day. Nice. He was funny, man. He, he really had great. everybody going. And of course, cosplay contests, all the artists that were there, all the merch, all the food. Uh, uh, they they had um, they had food trucks there. Uh, a bunch of amazing cosplayers. Mm. Oh my god, it was so packed. I was like, are we not in LA right now? I've never. I, we've we've been doing Gem State Comic Con for three years now, right? Mm. It's never been this packed. Same venue. It has never been this packed. This it was it was it was amazing to see. Well, good, 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 good. I'm glad that people are, you know, actually realizing it exists and you know, actually giving more more press to it. Yeah, no, it was it was a great show. Uh very, very happy that it turned out the way it did. Uh James is saying Robotech deserves all the flowers. Um it's uh, again we 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 made it clear to uh <laughs> we made it clear to tony that um that james was upset that he wasn't there uh <laughs> but james to make up for it tony is going to come on the show so we should uh we, sh we should see that hopefully soon man um yeah, Sam was amazing. I had an amazing conversation with him before the con opened on Sunday. Uh, and a real estate agent. Um, it had Cam. It has grown so much over the year. It was it was really mm. packed, man. Uh, so yeah, Tony Oliver uh, is going to come on the show. Spencer Wilding is coming on the show. Um, let's see, let's see. Anybody else from the show? Sam Quasman is going to be coming on the show. Mm. So we're going to have Donald Duck himself on the show. It's going to be great. And we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a great time with all of that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that leads into the next show because our next show is Beaver State Comic Con. Oh, that's an amazing logo. I know. Just... <laughs> so, Beaver State Comic Con in Bend, Oregon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, May eleventh, twenty twenty four, uh, at Deschutes County Fair Expo Center. Uh, it's gonna be a great time. Uh, it's featuring Tammy St uh, Stronach from uh, she's she played the Empress in uh, the Never Ending Story. So for all of our fans that are from Never Ending Story, um, you know the the Empress will be there. Gigi Edgeley is going to be back. Spencer Wilding is going to be back, and then Lizzie Freeman, uh, who is most famous for JoJo's Bizarre Adventures and Genshin Impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course we'll probably see um, more more guests there. Uh, there's actually a good chance that Ming might actually show up to that one because he said he wants <laughs> to go to every show. Oh, well, good. Yeah, so we'll just, we'll just drag him along with us. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, 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 I have his like direct phone number now. So, like, you know, like in, right. we were texting all Monday. Nice. And just like texting each other's pictures from the weekend and everything like that. It was great. Nice. <laughs> yeah, the shoots. Uh, so sketchy Nevada guy saying so. Wheat. Say Wong said, "Is this in, where is this in Iowa? No, no, it's it's it, Beaver State." Comic Con is is in Oregon. Yep, it's gonna be in Bend, Oregon, my friend. So be on the lookout for that. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find out more about Beaver State, oh. 
if you want to find out more about Beaver State Comic Con, uh, head over to BeaverStateComicCon.com and get all the information, all of the updates on the promos and uh, and and buy your tickets and everything like that, guys. It's going to be a good time. Uh, if you got Nevada, we are doing two shows in Nevada this year. Um, we are going to be doing Silver Age Comic Con because that's uh, a part of um, of Colossus Girl. So we 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 do Silver uh, uh, Silver Age Comic Con. We'll be talking about that once uh, once we get closer to that show. Uh, and then we're going to be doing Kaboom Con in uh, Carson City this year, which should uh, mm. going to be closer towards the end of the year. Uh, so be on the lookout, Sketchy Guy Nevada. Uh, if you want to catch us at any shows, we are doing two shows in Nevada this year. Um, so that being said, uh, let's get into the next part portion here. Uh, it is now time for lights, camera reaction and the graphic department updated us today. So we have quiet. quiet. There we go. <laughs> well, first trailer on the docket. We're oh. talking some Joker Folly Adieu. This is the one I have not seen. Uh, the trailer literally dropped as the show started. Uh, oh, funny right, enough. Well. Uh, with that, uh, I managed to find the trailer online. Somebody leaked it uh, early. Ooh. So I was able to get the full trailer online just to make sure that everything was already ready for the show. And I didn't have to. All right. Awesome. Uh, so keep in mind, guys, uh, we're trying something new today just so that way we don't get taken down off the Internet. Like we always do. I'm running the video backwards. Um, so uh, it is going to be uh, mirrored rather than being, you know, straightforward. If you do want to check out the trailer and it's in its regular form uh go to uh that's it's actually on youtube right now so yep. uh let's uh check this out because i actually haven't watched the trailer yet so we'll see here oh, nor nor have i a little hey fleck you got a joke for us today <laughs> yes. huh? So, also, just to know, I haven't seen the first Joker movie. You probably <laughs> should. It, it's actually a really good movie. I am already depressed. You I'm music. good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of messed up, but the movie is right. No, no, no. I, I, I've heard it's a good origin for the Joker. Kind of I'm modernizes nobody. them a little bit. Okay, there we go. I was like, how do you turn the volume down on this? Kind of loud, but it's fun. Uh, so it's supposed to be a musical. The entire thing is supposed to be a musical. I mean that that seems about right. You know, it's a little just... weird, honestly. Like, um, um, but see, at the same time, it just seemed like it's something that's in his head, though. Right. It seemed, yeah. It seems like a very Joker thing to do, though. It's like, oh, the whole thing's a musical. Yeah. Now, the so. whole. What I'm wondering is, is he fantasizing about Harleen, or is she in? Is she in the psycho ward with him as well? Because she's supposed to be. She's supposed well, to be. Doctor. Yeah, oh, that's, that's what okay. I'm saying. So you see that he was running from himself. Yeah, which is is really, it's really interesting here. Mm -hmm. So she kind of looks cool as the uh, as Harley Quinn. Yeah. So. Huh. I I do really like his like Joker makeup and all of that. See, but the whole thing with like the bar dividing them makes me think that she is still just a doctor, but she kind of goes crazy just by treating him or something. I don't know. Because that is something that's like in the storyline is that she it, it, it's it's almost like um oh, what is it called? Night uh, Nightingale syndrome or it's yeah, it's something like that where you the doctor falls in love with their patient or vice yeah. versa. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, it's definitely creepy, but you know. oh, yeah. huh. all right. So it looks like Joker Folly Adieu uh, will be hitting theaters 
on uh, what was that? December tenth, October tenth, October tenth, October fourth, yes. October fourth. Dyslexia twenty four. Uh, dyslexia and I don't. I'm not and I'm not dyslexic. Uh, <laughs> October fourth, twenty twenty four. Um, so your thoughts on this, man? What are you, what are your thoughts on the trailer? Um, looks good to me. I mean, I don't. Right, because uh, you, you didn't see the first one. I've uh, not seen the first one. No. Uh, I've I kind of have gotten enough spoilers to know what generally happens. Um, yeah, I yeah. mean the, the whole thing is uh, the entire story is, you know, it's it's the twist at the end is is everything is made up in his head. So for as much as he, you know, as it seems grounded and everything like that, mm-hmm. it um. It, it ends up being that like all the things that are normal in his life were things that he made up in his head to make it feel make himself feel normal. Huh. And he just kind of embraces his madness. Huh. That's no, that's that's interesting. I think it's 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 a different take on Joker. I do agree with uh, my mother, and I'm not just saying this because you know I don't want to get harmed, but. Uh, <laughs> But no, uh, yeah, your mother's driving through Kansas right now and just right, uh, yeah. So fine. you know, yeah, she'll she'll be back in like three hours, and so right. you know, I just don't want to risk anything. Uh, but no, no, I do agree that we, let's you know, kind of, I don't know, calm it down a little bit on the Joker. You think yeah, it's we've had, We we've had a lot of Joker stuff that there are more interesting. Batman villains that have not been done to death, yeah, like Joker. It's I mean, like interpretation, see- reinterpretation, reinterpretation, right. reinterpretation. Right. It's like to the point that I think in the comics there are three Jokers, or there were three Jokers, or something. There are. Yeah, there's there's three different Jokers that represent the three different kind of like versions of the Joker that you see. Yeah, and it's like that should not be how it is. I understand in comics that it's a little different, but in terms of adaptations, we don't need that many Jokers. Yeah. You know, you've done the Joker once or twice. You're there. You know, I, you figured it out. So, no, yeah. I, I, I totally 100% get what you're saying. You know, it's like let's let's get like a whole series on Condiment Man or something. I'm just saying. I don't I don't know if we can get a whole series on Condiment Man. I, I mean, I would like to <laughs> show up at some point. Uh, <laughs> and knowing knowing James Gunn, we're probably going to get. Oh Condiment no, we're totally getting yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying that Polka it's... Dot Man, and he made Polka Dot Man way more interesting than he is. Yeah. Like, so it's I, like, I do, I do hope that uh, I'm sure there will be another Batman. I don't know if the Robert Pattinson Batman universe or the Joker universe is canon in the DCU. I don't think it is. Uh, it's multiverse. So I mean, the whole thing is it's it's, it's it's all worlds. Okay. Um, yeah, but I was I don't know if we do get a Batman in the DCU. I hope that the first movie is not Joker. I hope that it's a, a while until Joker shows up. More than likely, given what they're talking about, I mean, they're doing Brave and the Bold, and it's going to be uh, Bruce and Damien. So mm-hmm. there's a good chance, not the Joker, it's probably going to be Raish. Right, which I, who I think is infinitely more interesting. Yeah. So, uh, and I, you know, but if we're going to do Joker, I think we need to do a more, I I mean, this has been one of the best Batman movies ever, and it's weird. Uh, but the Lego Batman movie a little bit. It's actually where they sh- Oh yeah, no, it's great. Um we were talking we were actually talking about this that, that this weekend about how uh uh Zach Alphanak is playing the Joker, but then referencing mm-hmm. every iteration of the Joker. Yeah, is yeah, no, it's great. Um, but more the dynamic where they need each other in right. a way to to exist or to be stable or whatever is is really interesting. Yeah. And I think I would rather a movie with the Joker and Batman to explore that kind of relationship where it's almost a, you know, they're kind of enabling each other in a way. And that's kind of what they did in, um, in return of the Joker with uh, Batman begins Mm -hmm. is um, they made the Joker kind of symbiotic to Batman. And right. That's where Terry kind of like figures that out and he exploits the Joker's weakness in that. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying is I think that would be a really interesting storyline that would make the Joker different. Yeah. That would do a, a different take on him. Yeah. Especially I mean, I, in live action. I, I would 
really like a good take on not only just Talia and Raish, but like mm -hmm. if you're doing Talia and Ra if you're doing Talia Al Ghul and Raish Al Ghul, um, you know, throw in maybe like an Asriel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd you be know. that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, and that could set up like if you do go to the route and have you know, because if he if he goes the route of like, you know, taking old storylines and bringing them in front of these ones, mm -hmm. uh, you can go the route of Bane breaking Batman's back and Asriel taking up uh, the 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 mantle. Yeah. And then everything gets screwed up. That seems. Right. A, yeah. No, you know, that'd be, that'd and be then, great. Right. And then that gives you an opening to do Dick Grayson taking over as the Batman until Bruce yeah. comes back, you know, so like. You know, yeah, there's a lot of like good storylines that you can do um, if you introduce someone like Asriel, because now you have mm -hmm. a reason to bring him in and have him take up the mantle. Yeah, you know, or oh, do like yeah. an, or do like an anarchy. Like I think anarchy would be an amazing character in the, in that world. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? Or he'd be a good one for Robert Pattinson to go up against. Yeah, which you know, it just depends on who. We don't. I don't think we even know of any. Uh, like casting or anything for Brave and no. Bold, but no, no, no. Brave and um, Bold don't have any casting uh, so far yet because they're focusing so much on Superman, right? Which is fair. I mean, that's that's good. So yeah, and they're starting to focus on uh, on casting for like Supergirl and stuff like that. Mm. What's up, Adam? Oh, Adam Matthew Smith in the in, in the chat right now. So Friends. anyway, point is, we're very excited for the DCU and figuring out what this is. But this yeah. movie also looks really good. Yeah, so. yeah. So what's your rating on this, man? Uh, on, the trailer, on the trailer itself right uh let's see um i'm gonna do eight uh eight inspirations from a movie about a person who can never stop smiling out <laughs> of okay. 10 uh, I would also fall in love with Lady Gaga. You have a type. Yep. I have, <laughs> again, I have many types. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. She do has a type. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chuck is going to crack up. <laughs> I actually might text him right now and say, I'm naming the episode. She do has a type. <laughs> So what about you? What is your rating? Uh, sketchy guy Nevada says a drunk. A drunk eight. Oh man. <laughs> oh James, I this is this is what this that's that's the casting I'm hoping for. I've been saying for a mm. while that I want Alan Rich Richson to play Batman. Yeah, I would love to see Alan Richson come in and play Batman. He's the right height. He's the right build. It's the first time we'd be getting a comic accurate build on batman because everybody that's played batman so far has been uh too short yeah the the whole balance here i think is also i don't want to get too much on a tangent about batman again um but is you need to have someone who can both be bruce wayne and batman and so i think i can do that i i definitely think so yeah, yeah. oh yeah he is like perfection and he's got the chin the, the chin is very important oh yeah absolutely uh, the other person that's in talks to to play Batman right now, and I, again, I'm not going to go too crazy on this, but is um, Jake Gyllenhaal. Which yeah, uh, okay. Jake Gyllenhaal can do Bruce Wayne really well. He's he's done martial arts yeah. action films. Uh, he can do action really well. He's right. got the jawline. Uh, I still think Alan Richson would be a better pick overall. <laughs> and I know Alan Richson wants to play Batman. So yeah, I, I love. I love Adam Matthew Smith's here. Uh, Adam Matthew Smith's thing here. Pedro Pascal's playing Batman. Yeah, but he just keeps the cowl on the whole time. Exactly. This is like this is the way. Right. Like <laughs> the the whole like no matter what he's Bruce Wayne. He's got the cowl on. He's got. You know, just, Are you? Only takes it off at like. Right? I'm not a bat. I didn't say you were a bat. I'm a man. Okay. I'm, I'm a man. man. I'm I'm not a bat man. I'm a man. <laughs> oh, anyway, <wait>. anyways, <laughs> let's get into this next trailer. This is something that that climbed out of left field. I don't think yes. anyone saw this one coming, and I'm just <laughs> all for it, ladies and gentlemen. Tales of the Empire. This is like season another, two of Tales of the Jedi. Yeah, I was saying like another short form storytelling uh, uh, series mm -hmm. 
coming from uh, uh, Disney on Disney Plus. Uh, and I'm all for this. This is such a good idea. It's, I yeah. love these stories. Uh, haven't watched so, the trailer for this. I saw all the explanations on it, and now I get to watch it. So, yep, I I have as well. So, so let's uh, let's check this out. Very excited about this. Why do you seek imperial favor? There's the volume. Ah! Years ago, there, is, my there, there, there you go. All right, so. Uh, my anger. Yeah, so we're getting oh more. Strange. Right, yeah, yeah. So we're getting more explanation on Morgan Elspeth from yes. first the Mandalorian, then Ahsoka, um, and of course Thrawn. Uh, well, I think this is going to talk about like their relationship prior to what happened in Ahsoka. Yeah, which which we very much need. We're also getting, uh, if you remember from Just Clone Wars, we are getting Barriss Afi again. We're going to find out what actually happened to her. I mean, and it's something that we kind of need. I, I like when they they, they take these characters that we have like learned about, but like wonder what's going on. Oh my god! Yep, and then it's yeah, the Grand Inquisitor as well. Oh, aren't they supposed to be doing the uh, uh, the rise of the Inquisitors in this? Yes, that is somewhat kind of what Barriss' story is. Yes, so. uh, but but I like when they take you said char- like obscure characters that we just didn't see very much about, and they. And they expand on those characters within like some of this stuff, right? So, especially when it's like characters that you're just like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that I wanted more. Is she? Oh my god! Yep, yep. You cannot stop. She was just She's fighting. Also... She was just fighting Grievous. Was that Elspeth with the lightsaber? Uh, no, that was so that was another Inquisitor. I think it's the oh, okay. it's like sixth sister or something. And so, because well, she is a night sister, so I mean, she does have command over yeah. the force, just in a different way. Right, and so it's really, yeah. Is that Anakin? It's it's Anakin. Yeah, the Anakin. It's, yeah, that's right. Yep, it's Anakin. Ah, yeah. Long live the Empire. Ooh, what a way to end that. Yeah. Long live the Empire. Man, and that's. Oh, God. Uh, I do wonder if that's the same. Uh, I assume that's Thrawn, but yeah. I, it's the same line from Ahsoka where he's like, "Long live the Empire," and she and I think Morgan Elspeth is like, you know, "Long live my people" or something. It's really, it's really interesting. I I so. love just what they're doing with all this and, uh, the, and the expansion of the uh, of the stories. Uh, it's it's mm. Maloney again. His his storytelling is uncanny. You know, like everybody oh, yeah. to sit there and and you have the internet that's now complaining over over Filoni again. Uh, I don't I don't know if you saw on April Fools uh, somebody posted something about him retiring. Oh no! And and like it backfired. Like the internet was mm-hmm. like rejoicing that he left, and I'm like, why does everybody hate Filoni? Why? Like, yeah, Filoni why? brought back everything good about Star Wars. Yes. So I, I don't is, get why anyone hates on Filoni at all. I don't all. either. I don't. Uh, I don't get it. Um, but anyway, another weird little Easter egg thing, which I could go into all of this. But yeah, yeah. we do see in the shots with all the Inquisitors and then Barris. We see the Inquisitor from the first season that was dueling Ahsoka. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Too. So it we kind of places it in the timeline too that it's going to be. Oh, and we see Marok. Yes, I saw. I noticed that too, as well. So. I, I wonder if they're yeah. going to tell that story. Like, again, uh, right. kind of we, adjacent we, to. Well, we know he's a space fart, right? So the whole thing is like, right. you know, I, I wonder if they, if they uh, uh, kind of like explain, like further explain that mm-hmm. he's a, now that we know he's a space fart, that, like, you know, how they contain that space fart and made it fight. Right. Or if he was at some point, because we're getting both Elspeth and the Inquisitor. So I'm wondering if the stories will converge at some point. Right. Almost. So we do get Marok in both. Maybe we see Marok die in the one of the Barris episodes, and we see him get resurrected by Elspeth in one of the Elspeth episodes. Right. Or I so. wonder if that's his race. If his race just like then he needs a containment suit. Right. Or he could even be like a Knight Brother or something. That would be kind of cool too if he was a Knight yeah. Brother. Like if it's so like if he if you um if he like if you actually took the mask off. Uh, right. That he was um, Zabrak under that. 
<laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Would be would be awesome. So anyway, very excited for this. This is Absolutely. uh I love I again I love the yeah, the expansion of the universe of shorts. It's almost like a canon version of visions to me. Yeah. Sometimes. It kinda is. They're kind of allowed to do weirder stuff too. Right. So right. and explore more of like the kind of gray side, because you have the Dooku episodes and all of that, and you know, we got all of the exploration of, of his view of the forest and you know it was really yeah so i very very excited for this so what is your rating on this oh i am going to give it uh 10 beskar spears okay out of 10 Anakin meeting Varys again in a different context. Hello there. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I am going to give this, as far as excitement and making me want to watch this, I'm going to give this 10 Thrawn saying epic words out long of 10. Live it, long live the Empire. Out of 10 epic fighting space farts. <laughs> <laughs> nice uh and speaking of star wars our uh third and final trailer is also star wars it it definitely is so let's get but that it is the here. more grimy underside of star wars you could say i guess i guess you could say that so it is a smuggler thing here uh i'm, I'm very excited for this too oh god just in time a wild Woo! job next and we're here to nerd together. <laughs> <laughs> almost there. We almost got it. We were almost there. <laughs> Whatever you're nerdy on, we want to talk about it. Shut Relate? up. What? I'm on, I'm on time. No, you're on time. You're you're here right on time. We uh we're just you're starting yeah. we're just starting to do trailers right now. Yeah. Oh, that's so that's first funny. trailer is Jokey Joker follow follow you do. Oh, sweet. I'm glad, I'm glad uh, we haven't uh, watched it yet because I haven't seen it yet. Hmm. Hmm. So anyway, Star Wars Outlaws. Awkward. <laughs> uh, but yes, we're going to get into Star Wars Outlaws here. Um, do it. The announcement it. trailer was already really do cool. It. So I'm do it. Uh, so I'm excited for, for the game itself. Uh, and this yeah. is supposed to be a story trailer, correct? Uh, yes, it is the story trailer. Okay. Now, is, is this that game that was canceled like five years ago no you're thinking 13, 13. so you're thinking of 13 13 13, oh, okay. 13 got canceled uh, yeah that was a whole thing too and that was yeah. more than five years ago i think that was yeah. a while back and that one was supposed to be you you played as a bounty hunter as it was a bounty hunter and then young boba fett right uh and you're also playing as a bounty hunter in this one but right. <laughs> tater he showed up he, uh, about time he showed up. He's fashionably late. Sorry, yeah. Tater. I was I was sleeping. I don't know if he was sleep. Yeah, James you arrives sleep? precisely when he means to. Yeah. Tyler, Sketch you asleep? Sketchy guy in Nevada gave uh, the last trailer a drunk fifteen. <laughs> a drunk 15. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's check out this trailer here. All right, I like it. So I have also seen this one. I have not seen <clears> this. One. Oh, what the heck? Play what? Oh, no, no. We're no, starting rumors again. I don't know. No. I don't. I don't know. All right. No, that's still the... Oh, yes. This is going oh, great. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I don't... I, I think it may not have loaded correctly. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, oh what? There it is. is. Hey, oh. Represent some of the most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy. Is that that one planet they went on with, like, a weird horde? Yes, it is Cantobite, indeed. Oh, that is Cantobite. It's, 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 you know, it's a golden age yeah. for the underworld. The Empire is that an extra old. from Game of Thrones? Who's that? Guy? <laughs> oh, my God. This looks great, though. Like, like just... It's an opportunity to... That, well, this, this is, is also, awful. like... This is also, also said... That this is just kind of in game. Uh, it's not in game. It's just in game footage. So. It's just, it's just every time you do any kind of Ubisoft game, it's always that way. The thing right. is, okay. So for anybody who watched me play uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, mm -hmm. their in game graphics are not that much different from their uh, from their cutscene graphics now. They do a lot of um, 
They do a lot of uh, in-game yeah. engine uh, stuff. Yeah. Han. Yeah. Was that Han? Okay. Yep, that, that was Han. Okay, so I, I'm wondering, is, does this take Was that my two? Yeah, it was. Yep, it's, it, there's, there's Tatooine as well. There's Ba two. yeah. So, so I'm wondering if time frame where this is taking place is in between episode it is. Uh, five and six. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we oh, get yeah, Jabba. There's, there's, there's Jabba. Yeah. This is interesting. This is an interesting time timeline to put like to put the game in. Mm -hmm. Is you're playing through the original uh, the original trilogy, right? Kind of in between two events here. So right, which is pretty cool because you know the the original trilogy has been kind of like sacred ground. Like they haven't messed with it or done any side stories within the original trilogy. Right. Right. And Disney's been really good about like the way that they do the thing. With all this stuff, like in between all, like if you're playing with like, in between everything. She's more connected than you let on, Slero. Best no. is mixed up in something bigger. Oh my God! The outer so cool. rim is a dangerous place. The outer rim. Yeah, yes. so she's playing to the outer rim. It's it takes place in the outer rim. As well, over multiple planets, it's open world as well. So, is that Doc Afra? Oh, is that a Death Trooper? Yep, there's Death Trooper. That's a great dragon. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So it's very. Uh, yeah. No, it's it looks really awesome. Um, and yeah, and in canon. Uh, from what we've gotten, because they haven't messed with it too much with like live action stuff and people, most people, are, uh, things most people are going to see in the comics. It's been in that period for a while, uh, and actually, in that period, we get the War of the Bounty Hunters, which is yeah. basically a bunch of criminal syndicates go to war with each other, and so we're going to be right in there too. Hmm. So it's it, like everybody's trying to backstab everybody else. So it's really, it's really going to be interesting. And so it's kind of how her story fits into all of this. Gotcha. So and yeah. just to be clear, that's not Doc Afra. That's that is uh, not Doc. No, that is a completely Vess. new character. New character named Vess. Vess or Vess. Yeah. Yeah. So. Still, man, it just it looks really good. I'm yeah, excited for the entire story. Uh, I mean, you know, again. Every time that we do all this stuff, I'm the one that, that, that that's going to be playing it, and I'm just oh yeah, you know, because I'm I'm uh, probably going to play it too, but but I mean, I like on stream. So oh like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I played um, the last one I played was uh, uh, Survivor Jedi Survivor, mm -hmm. and that game was awesome, right? So like yeah. I can't, I can't wait to play this. This is going to be uh, a crap ton of fun. <clears throat> uh, sketchy guy Nevada, uh, late but worth it. Fifty out of ten passed out on green milks. <laughs> nice. Nice, dude. The graphics did look good. It they did. Yeah. Look really, oh, yeah. really good. And again, it's Ubisoft, so I mean, you know, it's going to be just as good as any Assassin's Creed game. They have exactly writers. And no They're matter what your opinions on those are now, yeah. Uh, and there are already a lot of negative things about this, just because people don't like Ubisoft. So yeah, yeah. And Ubi ice cream is delicious. I just want to <laughs> add that. I want to add that to the right. mix. It's it, it's very soft. You could say yes. Exactly. I'll, I'll let me dive in because I don't. You know more about Please, this go. than I do, but but I I like this. I give this uh, nine uh, Ubi ice cream cones out of, <laughs> uh, <laughs> out of uh, ten of those cool speeder bikes. It looked like an actual yeah. motorcycle, but, but on the water. But on the water, and I was very impressed with that. I like it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Shadu, what is your rating, sir? I am also going to give it nine. Uh, Han frozen carbonite mm. in a uh, perpetual. Uh, just out of ten. <laughs> perpetually surprised. Just, just yeah, perpetually like, out of ten. Adorable land dwelling axolotls. Yeah, Aww. was a land dwelling Star Wars, axolotl. Star Wars <laughs> axolotls. That's very cute. Young Phil, what do you got? 
Uh, I am going to give this nine disgusting, crawling, but cackling space slugs. I guess it's not really cackling. Okay, um, <laughs> out of 10 uh, smuggler ships that somehow can beat out all the TIE fighters, because I don't know. I guess TIE fighters are just not good pilots, as they're supposed to be the best pilots in the galaxy, but they're not. I mean, the Kessel Run, 11 parsecs. Oh, Ooh, watch uh, out now. Yeah, see that? The pre-order actually gives you uh, uh, like a Kessel Run challenge ship. Oh, I, I did. Yeah, see it's like a that. whole... I've, it's cosmetics and shit. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, let me go back. Also, everybody uh, is very attracted to that Commando Jordan trench coat now. Oh, my God. That thing looks yeah, badass. Yeah, they, it's... Yeah, people are... Yeah. yeah, it's called the Kessel <laughs> Run. Uh, also, uh, you can get the gold edition or the ultimate edition of Outlaws, and you'll be granted early access three days ahead of the time on August 27th. Mm. And yeah. assumingly, uh, there will be DLC as well at some point, and that will be early access to that as well, I believe. Yeah. Awesome. So. All yeah. right. Well, let's, uh, let's move Any on. Any more trailers? <laughs> Cool. Let's get to that Gem State Comic Con recap. I'm excited. Let's so do now it. we're <laughs> so uh, let's talk about Gem State again. Uh, absolutely not, James. We're late for that. So let's go. So uh, now, yeah, go like Death Star plans, we are moving on to the download. Oh, okay. Skip Beaver State. I don't know where they get in their nose, but oh. I'm not mad. It's not in control. Okay, then I then, then I, I have to just run the transition again. Like many Bothans, we are starting some rumors. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. Hey, not, bad. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. All right. Marvel's X-Men 97 animated series has some new rumors circulating. According to a report, by the end of season one of X-Men 97, the X-Men team will be sporting some new badass superhero suits. I said badass because sketchy guy has to drink <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> Tacos on the table. Are we getting new suits for the blue team? Maybe the red team? What What do you think is going to happen? Huh. Gold team, uh, maybe? So I, I do see them kind of uh, uh, updating the suits. It's been a little while since they've had a, like a complete update. Since 97, you know what I'm saying? Get it? Well, at least, at least for these versions of the characters. There have been updates to the costumes in different iterations of different cartoons. But it'd be hmm. kind of, it's going to be kind of cool to see like you know how they upgrade update their costumes within this universe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So my tacos are on the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shadu. Shaduski. My uh, kind of, uh, I don't know. They're <laughs> your uh, meat and taco. Well, I mean, they're you know they're they're different. They're different tacos, but is it you know, registered? But, well, you know, I mean, maybe the taco doesn't doesn't believe in that. Maybe it's you know that you know the 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 taco is. Is 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 different and yet hasn't really discovered why they're different yet. Oh, you know, it's okay. just yeah, you know, your your angry uh, shape shifting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the the, uh, the taco uh, is occasionally a burrito, uh, occasionally uh -huh. a quesadilla. Sometimes that burrito is uh, blue. It's white. Sometimes the burrito is blue. Uh, sometimes it's a chimichanga. Yeah. Um, uh, though when it's a chimichanga, you probably don't want to uh, get get very close to it. That's, uh -huh. that's not, mm -hmm. a, not a very good idea. It'll, it'll sometimes it has a there. sometimes it has a stripe of sour cream on right, top of it. Right, there's uh -huh. that, and sometimes it's just really windy next to the taco. <laughs> really windy. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, yeah. uh, but, but it makes me laugh. It makes me laugh. Yeah. 
Uh, Sandra from the long family said that, uh, they need more dancing tacos. The kid loves it. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Shout out to the DeLong family. They're awesome. Um, my tacos are on the table. I think they will find a way to uh, go from X-Men 97 into their own thing. I think they're going to kind of evolve and like, hey, we're going to play off nostalgia, but we're going to mm -hmm. amp it up just like the way Masters of the Universe amped it up. And like, hey, we have an homage to the original and we love it. You know, we grew up on it. But now let's make it a new thing. I think they're going to make mm -hmm. this a new thing, sell a lot of toys. What if they end up making uh, the new suits, like all black leather suits, like the X-Men movies? <laughs> oh, no. No. Oh, I really hope they don't. Uh, that'd be full circle. That'd be good. All right. Cool. Those are them tacos. <laughs> all right. And moving from one previously animated show that got moved into the modern era to another uh, show that was at one point an animated show that is now getting a proper live action adaptation. Some new rumor details have surfaced for Marvel's The Fantastic Four. They involve the film's alternate universe setting and the birth of Reed and Sue's son, Franklin. A poster was released for the film featuring Joseph Quinn's Johnny Storm as the Human Torch flying through the sky. There was also one other interesting detail, which includes a cool retro-looking 1960s version of Central City, the home of the Fantastic Four. According to the rumors, the movie most likely will be set in an alternate universe, a retro-futuristic universe. We know that the space race is a big inspiration for the film as well, but an alternate timeline space race will be interesting. Another report claims that Reed Richards and Sue Storm's children will be introduced in the film, as a possibility that Sue will be pregnant when she's introduced. It's explained that she will later give birth to Franklin Richards in space. Space, 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 space. space. So, talk is on a table. Are we getting a different MCU for FF4? Hmm. Uh, I, I'm not against the idea of this, but also that could explain, uh, give a little bit of origin specifically to... Um, to uh all of a sudden I'm forgetting his name right now. He's the first Frank. story we're over in the download. What? Uh Jonathan Majors? Jonathan Majors, Kang? uh King the Conqueror. That's what oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could give a little bit of explanation into into the background of King the Conqueror. Is that because mm -hmm. what if what if the like uh uh the <clears throat> the origin Kang is from this universe? Ooh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I see where you're going. All right. Yeah. All right. Hmm. I mean, I think that that would be a cool idea. You know, um, our tacos are on I, the table. It, it makes it makes all the sense to put them in an alternate universe that also explains why they haven't been around in this universe. And you can do uh, an original origin story mm -hmm. that explains why they weren't there and why they're there now. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I also wonder what because I, I do I do like the whole idea that it's like, oh, it's an alternate space race. So it could be that, you know, we could, again, introduce Dr. Doom or something. We could have where it's, uh, you know, Sokovia when, you know, goes to the moon first or something or helps the Soviets go to the moon first or something. We get kind of a different, almost mm -hmm. an alternate history thing as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can do it. So. My tacos are on the table. It it seems more than likely, you know, especially with the artwork that we're getting, that we're going to have some kind of um, alternate, you know, very 60s vibe reality. Mm -hmm. This is my thought. I think we've seen it already. Oh. I think maybe in the Marvels when, when um, what, what's her name by then? Monica Rambeau? When Monica... Yeah, when she got, I didn't know if it was like Pulsar or whatever. Um, I don't think when she has Monica, a name yet, but that's a she's good point. Spectrum in, in, in this universe. They, they 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 made a reference to it in the movie that you know maybe we can call you Spectrum. She's like, no, <laughs> uh, but her mom is Pulsar. Uh, Pulsar though, in the hmm. in that universe. That's what I think we are. I think Fantastic Four takes place in that universe. Ooh. So that's uh, Fantastic Four and X Men in the same universe because Beast 
uh you, know, you, you have beast in that scene plus and it was a much more x-men 97 style yes and he, the X-Men yes, too. Queen. right 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 and he and he mentions uh specifically mentions professor x so mm. it uh-huh. could even be exactly. here's here's the wild the wild theory my uh, phrasey without fray here theory <laughs> uh that the reason they're doing x-men 97 now is because we're going to meet those x-men in fantastic four Oh, look at you. You smart son of a... (laughs) So good. I like that. That is good. good. Um, So, yeah. So, my uh, stretchy, flaming, uh, invisible, silvery... uh, (laughs) Silvery. Silvery. uh, What's what's the... uh, And... Harold? Heraldy uh planet sized tacos are on the table. Oh, okay. I like it. Yeah, mine are on the on the table too. I think I think we're they're gonna be in that universe with the X-Men, and I think that's gonna give us a nice fresh like uh take on things where we can be like, oh, we don't have to play by all the rules, we don't have to wait for Captain America to show up in the background, that sort of thing. We can have our own thing, and Kevin Feige has his own like new set of toys to play with over in this universe. Right. And then K-D-I-N. whenever they want to go like, yeah, let's smash them together. Then they'll get there with Secret Wars. There'll be an incursion at the end of it or something because of yeah. Galactus. I don't know. Oh, mm-hmm. I like the idea of that too. I like it. Absolutely. Young Phil, what do you got? I already said my tacos are on the table. I, I gave my explanation oh. at the top. Oh. So we're good. There. Second helping in tacos. Good for you. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there it is right here. Uh, sketchy guy in Nevada. Didn't the actor that plays Kang go to jail? So he, so what he conquered. Speaking of good I segue, know, it's time for it's actually a really good segue because, ladies and gentlemen, who let's get the bad news out of the way. It's just, just Ugh. oh, wait, hold on. Before we get the bad news out of the way, you got the download. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it is time to get into the news. That's it for uh, uh, for, for rumors. It's time for the download. <laughs> One small step for man, one giant stretch for Reed Rich. Oh, oh. I mean, that's not bad either. Uh, so, okay, so, so let's that get joke re- was a stretch. Get it? Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, former Marvel Universe <laughs> star, <laughs> Jonathan Majors has been sentenced to one year of domestic abuse counseling. So not actually in jail, but domestic abuse counseling in the lower Manhattan court after being convicted of assaulting and harassing ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. The actor will avoid the upwards of one year of jail time he could have potentially faced. According to a ruling from Judge Michael Gaffey, Majors will have to complete an in-person domestic abuse program in Los Angeles, where he's currently living, lasting 52 weeks. There's a stipulation that he could eventually switch to virtual sessions. Majors will also have to keep up with mental health therapy that he's already enrolled in and provide updates about his progress to the court about his progress. Progress to his court about the progress. About the progress. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so saying it, progress it, in progress in progress. Progress court. on the progress. Right. Progress on the progress. The right. judge also made permanent the order of protection that requires majors to avoid any and all contact with Jabari, with Mr. Jabari. Yes, please. Oh my gosh. Talk about toxic relationship it really Jeez. was um and i mean you know th- he had his explanation but in the end uh re- regardless of what explanation that he had and what reasoning he says that he had it, it came out to being domestic abuse and assault so i mean yeah. mm-hmm. and it's it's unfortunate but you know it it happened yeah. so and yeah honestly he got off easy yeah. I, God, oh, I was yeah. gonna say that i, yeah, I yeah. mean i don't really know the details of it but if feels like he did i mean got off easy is a weird term because like he got all his you know upcoming projects taken away you mm-hmm. know so i don't know if that's getting off easy but as far as like jail time goes and whatnot yeah it does feel like there may there maybe should have been more done but again i don't know yeah. the details so king, king immunity service <sighs> adam is throwing all the zingers today i love this <laughs> Yeah, it's um, 
Well, every cinematic I, universe needs a flash just off screen. I am curious as to now that this is all confirmed and everything. I, I don't even know if he was exonerated, if there would be, if he would be able to come back to the MCU. But I, I do wonder what this means for the future of Kang. Yeah, we've I mean, kind of been you know talking about that, but now we really have to consider: is it are they going to keep with Kang? Or, because we were talking about that with the Fantastic Four thing: is are they going to introduce a version of Nathaniel Richards? Right. Um, I don't know. I hope they do. I hope they keep going with Kang, just with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it, like in, I, I think the Kang storyline was leading up to something that was going to be a lot better than people were thinking it was going to be. Like right. I said, I, I think the way that they play their chess pieces, they were, you know, they're playing it slow. People just didn't like how slow they were playing it and it was going to pay off soon. Uh, I, I agree. And I think, yeah. So I really hope they just recast Kang and keep going. Yeah. Because the great thing about this, because it's like if, uh, you know, uh, Josh Brolin had some, you know, terrible thing that he did, or <laughs> what did Josh Brolin do? What? No, no, no. I'm saying if he had, you, oh. it's not as easy to, you know, oh, we're gonna recast Thanos. Yeah, it's really true. easy to recast Kang. Yeah, without well, having to give he wasn't even the first for it. He wasn't even the first Thanos, wasn't it? Somebody else that played Thanos in like that what was it, what was it Avengers? I don't know. Um, Maybe post credit scene. I think it was somebody else that played him, not not Josh Brolin. Oh. But you're right. Like recast him. Yeah. Get, yeah recasting Domingo. Kang is obvious. It's a really yeah. easy thing to do, oh. you know? Yeah. He's got very okay. so that's anyway, that's yeah. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. It's, He's it's, based it is all on variants. But it is yeah. unfortunate because Jonathan Majors was and is a amazing actor. Yes. So but Speaking it does tend to be that creatives, and I say this as a creative, uh, are not, are, we're weird. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, let's leave it at we, weird. We make that let's leave it at weird. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the other, the other, uh, I was just going to say before we move on, the other th like major thing that's happening in the chat today is everybody's just saying Pedro Pascal is everything. Oh, major, major thing. Major Pascal's Kang. Major is going to be playing Batman. Batman. Again. Pedro, Pres Pedro oh. Pascal is uh, Rob Liefeld. So Pedro yes. Pascal what? is Rob Liefeld. And speaking what's, of Rob Liefeld. <laughs> speaking of, what's in Liefeld's pockets? We're about to find out. Comic book artist Rob Liefeld, fr friend of uh, Young Phil, has yes. announced his friend of the show. Mem <laughs> friend of the show. His memoir. Rob Servations is coming. So Liefeld That's contributed to Marvel name. and the formation of Image Comics in the 90s, known as the creator of Cable, Domino, and Deadpool. This is kind of cool. We're getting a book. Nice. Yeah. I think it's actually kind of funny that he's naming his book after like, it's the same his name. Podcast. That, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's good. Cool. Uh, Liefeld's memoir promises to provide readers with an intimate look at his journey from a pastor's son in Orange County, California, to becoming one of the most celebrated figures in comic book history. Rob Servations will feature 10 original illustrations and promises to take readers on a captivating journey through his personal life and over his 35 year plus career in the entertainment industry. That's kind of kind of interesting. I kind of like that he's taken he's going to share it with everybody. I dig it. Yeah. Uh, it will lift the veil on the inner working of comic book publishers, the suits behind Hollywood studios and pivotal moments that would have that will have shaped modern pop culture from behind the scenes anecdotes to reflections on his career, defining decisions, as well as facts little known in the comic book industry. Liefeld offers a candid and compelling account of his life and legacy. How we feel about this? I'm, I'm, I'm ready awesome. for him. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm excited for this. I'm probably gonna end up buying it, and then next time I see Rob, I'm gonna try and get him to sign it. Right. Oh, look at you, first name basis. I like that. Rob mm -hmm. Servations will be coming in early 2025 through Ben Bella Publishing. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, that's very cool. Very, very, so, very cool. Uh, 
speaking of sweaty shirtless, I mean, um, speaking <laughs> of... <laughs> I got my shirt on. We, we can't even and tell. I am sweaty. taking this story because if you heard my tirade earlier, you know why. In what we do in life, echoes in eternity. News. Ridley Scott's Gladiator sequel has entered the Great Arena. The Coliseum, you could say. Hmm. The film's official logo and title debuted during CinemaCon at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, which seems Cinemacon. appropriate. That seem, it seems very appropriate, Caesars Palace. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Good point. Where Paramount Pictures will present an exclusive sneak peek at its upcoming theatrical slate on April 11th. First announced as Untitled Gladiator sequel and referred to as Gladiator 2. The just confirmed title is Gladiator 2. Whoa. <laughs> just, so, so mind blowing. Just, just Gladiator 2. Accompanying <laughs> the logo is a tagline taken from the first film, What We Do in Life Echoes in Eternity. Referencing the words that Roman general Maximus Decimus Mavidius, Russell Crowe, told his troops before leading them into battle. And we also have a synopsis. We have the Maximus Decimus Opsis Mavidius Are You Not Entertained to Synopsis. Maximus Decimus Opsis Meridius Are You Not Entertained to Synopsis. Synopsis. Or in Latin, Synopsis. Set about 15 years after 2000's Gladiator, Oscar nominee Paul Mescal from uh, After Sun fame plays a grown up Lucius Verus, son of Lucilla a returning Connie Nielsen. The original Gladiator starred, starred Crow as the enslaved general turned gladiator idolized by Lucius. Originally played by Spencer's uh, by Spencer Treat Clark, who cheered the Spaniard in the games. Maximus died saving Lucius and Lucilla, having avenged his murdered son and wife with the death of power-hungry emperor Commodus. Uh, played by Joaquin Phoenix. Hey, Gladiator brother. 2 will <laughs> enter the Coliseum on November the twenty second. All right, so I'm into that. Yeah, I like I like the storyline. I like what they're doing with it because, like, at first you're thinking like they're doing they're doing a, another gladiator, you know, movie. Like, what are they going to do? Maximus died, so what? Right. Are they right. And, and I like that they are. Um, I, I'm I'm going to continue to say the name uh, the, the the way that's pronounced in the movie, not the way that. It's, Latin. I'm, I'm, I'm just being, yeah, I'm being. Yeah, yeah. I know that's how you're supposed so. to say it in Latin, but I'm, it's, it's <laughs> gonna be fun to see Lucius as an adult mm. and seeing kind of how that influence changed him, right? Like, you know, him idolizing Maximus and, uh, you know, realizing that his uncle was a slimy worm, uh, mm -hmm. even though emperor, you know, and just kind of like also the, um. The, the the fallout of seeing your uncle murdered in front of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really it's really interesting. Um, Sewan brings up a really interesting point. Yeah, it's uh, to, it's it is four emperors. Yeah, it's set in the year of the four emperors, which is a insane portion of Roman history. Yeah, which also uh, yeah, like thousands of years after. <laughs> The events of the original Gladiator movie, but again, it's fiction, so you can do what the hell you want. Right. I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, Commodus was not, I don't think in, I don't think that timeline lines up anyway. No, well, Co Commodus was the son of Marcus Aurelius, but the whole thing is like that also didn't, like, that's not how Marcus Aurelius died. That's not how. Right, right. It's very, kind of, yeah. Um, you know, so it's just kind of like, you know, like, yes, the, the, the familial. Uh, stuff that happened in that movie was was true, and also, also Maximus Decimus Meridius is not a real person. So I mean, like, right? It, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, Wait, there's, a, there's a certain amount of liberties you can take in historical fiction. Yeah. So, um, but uh, no, that's really good. It is. It is the year of the five emperors, and that will be really interesting to see if there is a a reference to that, or right. I mean, obviously, there'll be a reference to it, but if that affects the story at all. Yeah, I think we just blew James's mind because he was like, "Wait, Maximus is not a real person." Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm, a lot of the I'm events like crazy. the beginning of the movie are real, but yeah, so it's it's interesting. I would love this is a completely off topic. I would love a. I mean, I know we got Rome, obviously, but I'd love a series like a Game of Thrones style series. That's the year of the Five Emperors. Uh, mm. 
Game of Thrones would be fun, but I I I like the way Spartacus did Rome, and I think I would go. Yeah, like but more, I but I I'm like not saying Spartacus. I'm saying more like the kind of how the story is told almost. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Where like you kind Spartacus of get perspective did. from everybody. Well, yeah, I yeah, Spartacus was like that too, but so I just think it'd be an interesting series. Yeah, is what I'm saying. So, um, same one. Yeah, I mean. Movie yeah. comedy seemed like a fusion of Nero and Caligula. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, which, yeah. Which, I mean, Commodus was not a good person. Like, no. He was a terrible person, but he wasn't as bad as Caligula. Or Nero. He wasn't as bad as he was portrayed in this movie. Right, uh, exactly. But he was. It is true that uh, he did engage in an incestuous relationship with his sister. Also Caligula mm -hmm. to him. Also, like Claudius did. Also, yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of... The, the difference between the movie and the uh, and, and real life is in the movie, it was uh, unwanted. Right. In the film, it, or yeah, in the film, it was unwanted. In real life, it was... it was. Oh, it was totally consensual, yeah. Yeah, it was like mutual. Totally mutual. consensual. And it, like, when I read up on like, you know, Commodus in real life, I was like... This is so much weirder than than yeah. Than that. But, but again, if you dig in anything, like Alexander the Great had some sort of relationship with his mother. Oh well. my god! Yeah, there's okay. there's a lot right. of yeah. All right. It's a whole thing. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Yeah, I haven't had dinner yet. Please guys. God, Can we stop this. Please. I don't need to vomit right now. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, moving on. James Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> you bring in a whole new meaning to uh, Caesar salad. You know what I mean? Like, so mm. just let it go. Okay. Tossing well, you Caesar know, salad. I don't know. No, no. The, the the way that you make Caesar salad is you stab it twenty four times, and it's Caesar salad. Yeah. You toss the Caesar salad. It's chopped. Yeah, yeah, it's chopped. It's, it's chopped. In, come along and ride on a fantastic oh, voyage. Much. It's been over thirteen years since we've heard about anything about James Cameron's remake of the classic nineteen sixty six sci fi adventure, Fantastic Voyage. Cameron recently attended an event in Paris, this guy, uh, as the art of James Cameron is now on ex exhibition at the Cinématique Française. It was there the filmmaker offered the following update. Uh, we've been developing it for a number of years. We plan to go ahead with it very soon. Raquel Welch is not available, but we think we can make a pretty good film. Look at him and his jokes at his own event, celebrating his <laughs> his work. <laughs> the ego on this guy. Uh, no date on when the voyage will begin. I didn't know he was going to remake Fantastic Voyage. I, I okay. Cool. This is one of those films that I think would benefit from an update. Uh, I've thought for years that they needed to update this movie. I mean, it was a great movie when it came out. Uh, what was 66, 67? Six. Yeah, 66. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like the idea of like, you know, we've seen it all through pop culture and cartoons and different stuff. You know, somebody gets a shrinking machine, it goes inside of a person's body and all this. Like, uh, uh, every, every major cartoon has done an episode of like this, right? Right, right, exactly. Uh, I mean, I would love to see an update, like a modern update of Fantastic Voyage. Mm -hmm. So, is there going to be a scene though where like the ship explodes and, and all of that and there's just a little a little piece of the ship that is kind of floating along and there's one person there's 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 two people that have survived and uh but only one of them can fit on the board but really really both of them <laughs> pro probably could you know <laughs> probably uh on the door yeah. of the ship like probably they can fit right two yeah you know it's like yeah. you know no, 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 so probably anything, could, but no, no, one of them has to nobly sacrifice if, themselves. If, if anything, they're floating on a red blood cell. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, yeah. Oh my god. Such a such a good idea, but hilarious at the same time. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> that was funny it took though. me a second. It took me a second to realize what he was doing when he said that you know, and they can they, they can obviously fit on both. I'm like, oh, it's a Titanic reference. This is yeah. great. <laughs> Look, my my jokes are nothing if not convoluted. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 it paid off. It paid off. Good. I like Good. it. Well done. Well done. Okay, <laughs> in Angel Bar. Kirby news, there have been a few attempts over the years to develop a feature film adaption of 
Rob Liefeld's comic series Evangeline. Speaking the Rob last <laughs> exactly the latest attempt sees Olivia Wilde attached to direct the film. Okay. Margot Robbie is producing the film oh, through her Lucky Chap production shingle uh, with Tom Ackerley, Josie McNamara, Simon Kinberg. A big A-list writer is also circulating to adapt. Huh? Hmm. Yes. This actually sounds like a like a great idea because I mean, okay, look, right? Olivia Wilde has proven that she's actually a decent director. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I've I've seen everything that she's done so far, and I have not hated it. There's, you know, I forgot what movie it was recently that she did that had a crap ton of uh, controversy to it. Uh, and everybody was like, it, it sucked. But I mean, like, if you watch the movie, not knowing the context of all that stuff that happened, it's actually a good movie. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I'm going to look it up. Yeah. Uh, it was one of her more like recent movies. But I mean, it, it's it's good. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Olivia Wilde as a director is decent. And then you have Margot Robbie producing, which everything that she has touched has been gold so far. Right, right. You know? uh, and then you have like, you're looking at, Tom Ackerley, Josie McNamara, Sim Kin, uh, Simon Kinberg, you know, a whole, bu whole, whole bunch of writers that make amazing movies. So it's like, I don't, I don't see this being bad. Yeah, huh? I'm, yeah. I'm into it. Right. Uh, the film was previously described as John Wick, but with a fallen angel, Evangeline was originally published in 1995 and it's, uh, at, in it, Evangeline fights the forces of evil and often finds herself face to face with demons and monsters. No date when the film will fall from heaven into theaters. Hmm? All, right. All right. All right. Cool. And uh, uh, let's see what's transition here. Uh, yeah. Speaking of falling out of heaven. We have <laughs> <laughs> in all out of love, so lost without. Oh, news! I'm a, you're all out of love, I'm so I'm lost so without, without, without you. you. Can't be too late. Just <laughs> <laughs> I that news. Loved him back in the day. Sorry. Another classic music group is getting the biopic treatment with the feature film. All Out of Love, The Air Supply Story. Yes. Titled after one of the band's biggest hit songs, the film will be released in summer of 2025 to celebrate Air Supply's 50th anniversary. Damn. The group scored seven top five signals in a row, tying the Beatles' consecutive run, and mm -hmm. went on to sell more than 100 million albums worldwide. And, of course, we have a synopsis. We have the Here I Am Opsis, the one that you love synopsis. Here I am, Opsis, the one that you love, Synopsis. <laughs> synopsis. The film will explore the highs and lows of the band's career and their rise to international fame. It follows Russell, Russell and Hitchcock, the two founding <laughs> members of Air Supply, as they pursue their musical dreams, rising from humble beginnings in Australia to a breakthrough in the United States. I didn't Filming even know they were Australian. Me either. Filming is set to take place in <laughs> Australia and the UK during the fourth quarter of 2024. So what do you think? I'm so into this. I I used to steal this CD from my brother I because I thought it was like the coolest music back in the day. It's like white people R&B music. You know what I mean? It's, it's great. White people r &B. <laughs> so good. So I'm, good. I'm not sure whether to be offended or flattered, but <laughs> you should be flattered because yeah. <laughs> It's a very, very short list of white people. That got <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, uh, and of course, there is no date uh, when we will go uh, when we will go to theaters to get Lost in Love. So. I like it. Lost in love. Lost in love. That's what we need. We need some air supply like trap remixes. Oh, I bet, awesome. <laughs> yeah. awesome. I bet you I could find one. I, I'll, I'll right. find one and use it in the next post. I like it. I like it. All right. That will make me happy. Yeah, I bet it would. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, following up on the red pill news. <laughs> That's the move. All right. Did you, because you, you guys took the red pill, right? Probably Apparently shouldn't have did. said that right after we talked about white people R&B, but okay. <laughs> red pilling, because white people are red pilled. We're not going to get too further. Nope. Out. 
Nope, 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 uh, nope, nope. Warner Brothers, and I'm sure James is like, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. What are white right people now. doing? I don't... <laughs> uh, red, red pill. What are we doing? That's that's that is a good question. With, with, without further, like, <laughs> super explaining it, uh, red pilling is a term that, uh, like, racist communities on um on like, 4chan use. Yeah. All right. Well, we're not talking about 4chan. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're not, not, not going to get into that. What we're, we're, we're going to really not, talk yeah. about here is Warner Brothers is moving forward with another damn Matrix movie, and writer and director Drew Goddard is spearheading the, the, the development of it. Okay. All right. <laughs> How many more times can we be fooled? I know. I know. Goddard, best known for his work on The Martian, The Cabin in the Woods, and Bad Times at the El Royale, Will write and direct the Matrix film. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I know the sci-fi franchise's original co-scribe and director Lena Wachowski will serve as executive producer. Jesse Ehrman, Warner Brothers Motion Pictures pre president of production, added, "Drew came to Warner Brothers with a new idea that we all believe will be an incredible way to continue the Matrix world by both honoring what Lana and Lily began over 25 years ago." And offering a unique perspective based on his own love of the series and characters. That's what you said the first damn time, but okay. The first <laughs> but the first time was Lana Wachowski writing and directing a movie, and she did something completely different that was still she felt was still in the world. So I mean, like she I I mean, but then again, like you know, they kind of you know wrote two more movies after the first one that kind of you know overexpanded the universe, you know what I mean right mm -hmm. yeah it's just yeah. so with all that um what do you guys feel i mean like I, I guess the only thing that gives me a little bit of faith is that drew goddard is actually a really good writer mm -hmm. uh and you know I, I i would hope that he would write something if he's a big fan of it that he would write something that's you know both continuing the storyline but making it better right right my my general feelings are eh. yeah i mean you, you, you kind of tell <laughs> the way that i'm kind of reacting is it's kind of a meh like you heard the way I, I i said it was they're making another damn matrix movie right like eh. I, I like the matrix i'm just a little offended that they keep making them <laughs> um first one was good second one was okay third one was yeah uh, <laughs> the fourth one went back to okay right yeah you know but it still wasn't it didn't hold up to the first movie you know what i mean right i love the idea of the matrix no like the, the, the idea is is brilliant it's just the there's more you could do with it i think maybe I we like need a new neo it. right we yeah we need a new I, year or we need like to riff off the whole uh because for a while i don't know if they still are but for a while, everybody was thinking we were living in a simulation, right? Yeah, I think we are in this. What simulation. if? Okay, whatever. But you know, we were. Uh, <laughs> you know, we could do something where it's been a while since you know all of this happened, and we have like a new Neo being a scientist or being a you know, something like that. And you kind of whiff off the whole, well, there are people who do think we live in a simulation and what if they're right? How would we discover that? And so you do something almost more like mm. contact or almost more like yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe, and I don't know if you could do this necessarily, don't even market it as a Matrix movie. Market it as something completely different. Yeah. And then the everybody goes and sees, this is hard to do obviously in the age of the internet, but everybody goes to see it and they're like, oh, <laughs> So yeah. true. Then, and then like at the very Smith end you have like end. right the, yeah exactly at the very end you have agent smith come in you know or something and you're like oh so. yeah i don't know anyway i'm saying it, there's a lot more creative ideas you could go for and i hope they do yeah yeah i mean i, I agree with you on they, they they need to just have him they need to make it to where like the the, the matrix is rebooted and it, it's going on to the next uh the next neo the next one you know what i mean mm, right uh, the project is in early development and there's no word on if kiana reeves carrie ann moss or any of the original cast members will return 
All right. Well, all right. See how it goes. All right, moving on. Disneyland is finally driving to the future for Tomorrowland. Speaking of electricity. <laughs> uh, autos. Finally. Oh, my gosh. This is so long overdue. Finally, uh, the gas is leaving Autotopia. <laughs> Autotopia, a gas-powered attraction located within Disneyland's Tomorrowland in California, is going green by going fully electric, according to the Los Angeles Times. Citing a Disney spokesperson, Disney has decided to find alternative fuel sources. Just say electric, like... What yeah, are you going to throw like, banana peels in the back? Like, right, are you, you going like, to be the like, biofuel with the amoebas or whatever? Yeah, exactly. So, so basically, they're going to put a coffee grinder on the back of all of them? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, the classic Disney attraction, which first opened at the theme park in 1955, gives the younger guests the chance to drive cars for the very first time. As the industry moves towards alternative fuel sources, we have developed a roadmap to electrify this attraction and are evaluating technology that will enable us to convert from gas engines in the next few years, said Jessica Good, a Disneyland Resort spokesperson. About time. Uh, a timeline for the project and when Tomorrowland will join the future was not immediately available. Mm. Dude, I was just there like a month or two ago. Mm. And the the fumes, I feel so bad for the people that have to work there. <laughs> the because you can smell the fumes like right as you like see it. You're like, oh, Yeek. there's autotopia, and I can smell the gas like yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Like your popcorn smells like gas afterwards. It's not Ew. it's not cool. That's just not good at all. Um I, I it it's <laughs> It's a long time coming. Not not only has Autotopia needed an update, but it makes sense for them to update it to electrics. And I mean, the whole point of Tomorrowland was for Walt to showcase future technology. So yeah. why are they still using gas vehicles? <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. What I mean? they should have went electric like 10, 10, 20 years ago. It's and it's sponsored by steampunk. it's sponsored by Honda. Like they yeah. should. I know Honda has like a new all electric vehicle out. Like Honda should just go deep dive into this and be like, all right, this is ours for the next 15, 20 years. Right. Uh, we're going to label all the cars as our Honda, whatever they are. But Honda has had all electric, um, all electric, like uh, 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 lawnmower motors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's It's kind of like, you can develop something because you already have the technology. You just need to scale it up. Right. Because this is a go-kart. You All you need is a, like a... a it's a, it's a literally a go-kart. Yeah, most most go-karts are electric. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like It's a, it's a go-kart. All you need is a souped-up uh, uh, lawnmower motor for yeah, it. Exactly. You know what's funny? Like I, I never see them refueling them. Like I wonder if th there's like a weird... Like it's in the track system? I don't know. But I've uh, never seen them refueling them. So it's not in the track system. Uh at the beginning of the track, there's a uh there's like a little pit that you can go off to the side mm -hmm. on. That's got like a little like a little house right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So that's where they oh, okay. Yeah, so they pull them off to the little pit area right there, fill them up, and then put them back on the track. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm just like too high off gas fumes by then. <laughs> realize it. It's but, it's yeah. the magic of Disney. Right. You know, the, Disney's really good about whenever they need to do maintenance on something that's like on like in the middle of the field like that. That mm -hmm. it's something that you don't see, but also makes sense in another context. Right. Yeah. Right. Disney's really good about hiding stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say Wong in the chat. Uh I take it, James, you weren't there when the Chiefs were there? Of course I was not there. Say <laughs> they, they were at Disney World, not land. I'm not supporting them. Jeez. Okay, keep it going. From Tomorrowland to Women of Tomorrow News, DC Studios has been on the hunt for a director to take on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and Cruella, and I, Tanya, filmmaker Craig Gillespie, is now in talks to direct the new Warner Brothers film. First, huh? One second, I thought it. I thought it was Corella and I, Tanya. <laughs> 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 uh, 
that's a weird sequel that we don't need to see <laughs> no. about uh, Anya Harding and Cruella Deville. Though <laughs> I see a connection. <laughs> Me too. Anyway, uh, DC is looking to shoot the movie after James Gunn is finished shooting Superman. So Supergirl will be the next DC film to go into production. Uh, House of Dragons' Millie Alcock is set to play Supergirl, and it's safe to assume that she will be f- uh, she will first appear in Gunn's Superman movie. No set date when Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, will fly into theaters. I'm excited for this. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm be great for this. I think Craig Gillespie is actually a really good director. Yeah. Uh, because Cruella. I love Cruella. I love yeah, I Cruella. Like, Cruella was one of those movies that I did not expect to like. Mm-hmm. And then I watched it and was like, this is actually not bad. This is pretty good. Uh, yeah. because I, I, I'm, I don't like the concept of taking monsters and humanizing them. But they um, they they did a good job. There was a good balance in, in Cruella. It was, it was good. Well, good. I like it. And then, of like, course, oh. you know, humanizing monsters in uh, Tanya Harding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool. All right. I have seen neither of those movies. So, uh I'll take it at your. <laughs> I thought you're the film guy. You're supposed to. We gotta like get you like a list of. Movies. I'm a film. I have one. He has a list. Of a, I am a filmmaker who has not seen a lot of films. That happens a lot with. That's my selling filmmakers. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's yeah that's it. I'm a filmmaker who's not seen that many films. That's actually a good thing because then you're not um, influenced. Anyway, speaking of Game of Thrones. So. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got time for Game of Thrones. All right. Uh, so what came first, the dunk or the egg? HBO has cast the two leads of its upcoming Game of Thrones prequel series, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, colon, The Hedge Knight. The series is based off George R. R. Martin's The Tales of Duncan Egg, which follows the characters Sir Duncan the Tall and his squire, Egg. Egg. You'll see where that is in a second. Yeah. Variety I, reports. I, we talked about <laughs> it at the beginning of the show. We did. Yeah. Variety reports that Peter Claffey, uh, of Bad Sisters fame, don't know what that is, but cool, uh, has been cast as Dunk, while Dexter Solancel, The Hungry Games, The Battle of Songbirds and Snakes, has been cast as Egg. We have a game of Opsis, Dunk and the Synopsis. Really? Okay. Game of Opsis, Dunk, and the Synopsis. Synopsis. That's good. Well, it, it, it probably should have been, I hereby name you an Opsis, Knight of the Synopsis. But that's Oh, my God. That's so much better. Wait, where are you? Where were you this morning when we were writing this? Come on. Sleeping. Get in here. Sleeping. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Next to Tater, what's happening? <laughs> uh, eggs and Taters? No, Tater's asleep right now. The series is set a century before the events of A Game of Thrones. Two unlikely heroes wandered Westeros. A young, naive, but courageous knight, Sir Duncan the Tall, Clattery, and his diminutive squire, Egg. Set in an age when the Targaryen line still holds the Iron Throne, and the memory of the last dragon has not yet passed from living memory. Great destinies, powerful foes, and dangerous exploits await all those improbable and incomparable friends. Hmm. So yeah, so Egg is uh, is Aegon the sixth, I want to say. Yeah, well, he 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 becomes uh, uh, the Mad King eventually. <laughs> right, right. Or yeah. no, he doesn't because he's an Aegon, isn't he? Yeah, he. That, that's. I, I thought. I thought the, the Mad King is Aerys. Is it? I, I thought. Yeah. No. I, I think somebody Aegon. has some egg on their face. I know. I thought. Yeah. Aegon, I thought egg on. Hold on. I'm See what hold on. Okay. I'm looking. Fact checking. Oh, you're right. No, you're right. Aries. Aries the second. Is yeah, the uh, yeah. A- egg on the fifth Targaryen. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's before Aries, I believe. Yes. So. So yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> there you go. And so I'm very excited for this. This has been. This is one of the series I've been wanting since they were announcing announcing them so and yeah. seeing how good house of dragon is I'm, yeah i have i have some faith yeah i was it. gonna say I, I really love house of dragon which is coming back in june i believe not that far yes. away yeah and, and again you know this being duncan egg which is probably one of the second most popular series that um that george R. R. Mm. R. martin put out 
mm-hmm. you know, obviously after the uh, Song of Fire and Ice. Right, uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Of Ice and Fire, sorry, Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> uh, this, hey, weren't uh, they going to put out some anime movies or something like that? Like, tell more stories via, like, animation? Maybe. No? I mean, that'd be cool. Wasn't this the um, books where they explain the birth of um, uh, the imp? What's his name? The uh, Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage is Tyrion. Yeah, the, isn't this like Tyrion where they explain Tyrion? They, wasn't this the book where they explain Tyrion's uh, like the circumstances around Tyrion's birth? I don't know. I don't remember what book that was I from. So. I, remember, I, I thought but it was in the Duncan Egg series. It may have been. I don't yeah. know. I don't remember. Yeah, um, it, like it explains, you know, uh, how Tywin marries his cousin, and it's like a whole thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, but supposedly Ares uh, was was uh, supposedly Ares was was uh, um, having his way with his wife, and that's where Tyrion might be a Targaryen. Yeah, there's like a whole thing there. Yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, not to keep being so critical. I feel like I've been very critical this episode. Uh, but I'm going to continue to be. So, um, <laughs> again, with the questionable titles of these things. I, I agree with you on that. I feel, because with House of the Dragon, there were so many better, there's so many, you know, better titles than House of the Dragon. You could have gone Fire and Blood, uh, Dance of the Dragons, you know, any of those things. Yeah, you know, uh, the ballad of the greens and the blocks or something. You could have done any of those things. With this, you have two great titles, but you smashed them together. Right. You could have called it either a Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, which would have been a great title, or the Hedge Knight, or the Tales of Duncan Egg. Right. I but like, no, no, you went with a Knight of the Seven Kingdoms: colon the Hedge Knight. It's like, because I mean, that's what they did with Game of Thrones too. Like, you know, the uh, right. Game of Thrones is what the third book. No. Actually, a Game of Thrones is the first book. Okay, so, so that's the first book. So that makes a slight bit more sense. Yeah, but I mean, like you know, they've got that whole thing going on right there. There are there's just yeah. I, it would have been better as the Hedge Knight because that's what Dunk is known as. Right, just call it the Hedge Knight. Yeah, and I don't know, maybe. And again, the whole speculation around why they called it House of Dragon is well, maybe House of Dragon will be. You know, we'll get past Dance of the Dragons, so we'll do other Targaryen stuff. So I guess for this, it could technically be other stories about other knights of the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah. But just make that clear if you're doing that. Also, the Dance of Dragons would have been so much better. Yeah, Dance of the Dragons is a amazing name. I guess that may have conflicted with, there is, uh, I think it's the fourth Song of Ice and Fire book, is Dance of the Dragons, but still anyway. i'm gonna be the i'm gonna be the layman and i say i like the name house of dragons it's easy for me who's not super into the lore and everything but just i'm here for the ride i'm like house of dragons yeah oh, that makes but sense still but you know from watching game of thrones that fire and blood is the targaryen house words yeah uh i, I like so, the idea yeah. of the dance of dragons just because uh a lot of house of dragon is like politics and moving around within the house and you know kind of like all that stuff and right. which was the whole idea of the war was right the dragon, so right yeah and like I, I feel like the dance of dragons is something that encompasses the entire idea of everything that happens within that series of books mm. so anyway yeah. point is i'm still excited for this yeah <laughs> i think the name is questionable but i'm still very excited for this so absolutely so anyway, and then uh, we have and uh, the price is wrong. Oh, <laughs> yeah. the price is wrong, bitch news. Whoa, hey, easy. <laughs> Come Adam- on down. <laughs> <laughs> the price is wrong, bitch. Uh, Adam Sandler might actually be developing Happy Gilmore too. Last week, Christopher McDonald, who played Shooter McGavin, aka I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you eat pieces of shit, gross. Uh, in the original movie, offered an update claiming that the script had been written. Now, Sandler is confirming that the sequel is actually in development for Netflix. Uh, No tea time set for Happy Gilmore 2, but are you guys excited for it? I'm into it. it. 
I'm very excited for this. I love the first Happy Gilmore. Again, yeah. if they're going to be doing Happy Gilmore again, uh, it's going to be, if anything, they need to do like 30 years later. Happy still hasn't done anything with his life. And then you call it Sad Gillian. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, no, okay, cool. You know, so I mean, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I, I just want to see like, you know, it's been 30 years and I'm still trying to ride the, uh, ride the horse. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, hilarious, weird little fact, because apparently I'm taking Frey's place this time. Uh, the, pro or no, the director of The Price is Right is also named Adam Sandler. No what? way. Yeah, yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> That's really funny. That is interesting. <laughs> I'm happy about this. I'm, I'm happy as a Gilmore about this because... Mm. I love that first movie. And this is what I've been saying about Adam Sandler. Like he's doing all these movies, such a big deal for Netflix to do a bunch of new movies. Do the sequels we want to see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, give me more happy Gilmore. Give me Billy Madison. Give me, I don't know. Big daddy. Yeah. Maybe not big daddy. Yeah. Well, we'll you know, hope, hopefully this will be good. So we shall see. Know, give me, give me, give me a 51 first dates. 51 <laughs> that's funny the, the whole movie is just one date that's yeah, exactly it. Just one. And, <laughs> and speaking of that like do 51 first dates and yo let's get uh let's get our boy sean yeah. Aspen back as doug right mm -hmm. and, and you know that's drew nice. barrymore would be like yes let's do it yeah you you missed it at the beginning i was talking about at, uh during the interview there were a couple <clears> times where i made references and he just got into character like automatically Mm -hmm. So like I did a Tricks and little habit says And then he looks over at me with Like in the biggest Like excited shock face uh -huh. <laughs> And then just starts Delivering Samwise Gamgee lines <laughs> That's oh, awesome God, God. And then and then, uh, and then I asked him The the question about the crop top I was like so uh, When you go, Whenever you think of Hawaii Or whenever you go to Hawaii Do you wear a mesh crop top still? You know, or we forever wear mesh crop tops. Is that the only thing you wear? And he told a really good story about Hawaii because he considers Hawaii sacred, mm -hmm. right? Uh, for other reasons, he 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 did he did an Iron Man race there. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, he immediately starts talking as Doug, with the, <laughs> lisp and everything. I said, like, "You want to compare biceps?" And he just goes, <laughs> "I was like." <laughs> You are the best man ever. I love you. Oh. <laughs> Can I hear that sometime soon? Can I? Uh, I am waiting on our photographer to send me the video because we had audio issues on that one. But please, they have been salvaged with the video. Please. Oh, hopefully. Make it happen. Yeah. So, make it happen. Eugene, I need you to get that to me ASAP so I can listen through it and yeah. see what I can salvage out of it. I like mm. it. All right, let's keep All this right. going. We got some. We got a bunch more stories. Woo. All yeah. right. Okay. You need uh, dual okay. monitors. Yeah, I, I do have <laughs> dual monitors, but for some reason, my monitor blacks out as soon as I want to look at something, and then comes back on. So from CinemaCon, far, far away. <laughs> yeah. Ahead of CinemaCon, Disney Studios has announced the release dates for three of its big. Highly anticipated films, The Mandalorian and Grogu, Toy Story 5, and Tron Ares, hmm. the live-action Moana, and more. Tron Ares is now set to be released on October 10th, 2025. The film stars Jared Leto and follows a highly sophisticated program, Ares, who is sent from the digital world into the real world on a dangerous mission, marking humankind's first encounter with AIB. Ooh, dun 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 dun. dun, dun. dun. <laughs> so we're a what is that? A year and a half? About a, a year, year and a half away from Tron Aries. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm into uh, it. Now, John Favreau's The Mandalorian and Grogu is set for May 22nd, 2026. Ooh. The movie starts shooting in Los Angeles later this year, and the story will pick up from the aftermath of The Mandalorian season three. So we are not getting more Mandalorian anytime soon. Oh, that's. Nope disheartening and we got to wait two years for this right. again this movie better be good <laughs> i'm sure it will it's just upsetting that we're not getting a season more mandalorian or... as soon yeah. as we want it you know yeah. yeah 
I'm nervous because I'm used to the pace and storytelling of the Mandalorian being what, like eight episodes. So it's like four mm -hmm. hours worth of yeah. of uh, storytelling versus it's be now we're going to get into two or yeah. Again, what I'm hoping is happening is that this is like an extended pilot for season four or season five or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, that they're kind of just taking whatever the first story arc is and making it into a movie. Maybe. But, you know, Bob Iger gets what Bob Iger wants. So, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pixar's Toy Story 5 is set for June 19th, 2026. The film will see Tim Allen and Tom Hanks return to voice Buzz Lightyear and Woody, respectively. Hmm. Once Some again, do we really that. need this? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I got to say this about like, yep. I think they should have at first when Toy Story 3 came out and like that's how it ends. Perfect ending, chef's That's kiss. Go on, yep. I was right? like, yeah, they should have stopped after three. I agree. But I still like Toy Story 4. Uh, oh. Duke Kaboom is the shit. <laughs> Duke Kaboom, you're right. Canada's but, greatest stuntman. <laughs> but, you know, seeing the characters, I mean, you're you're kind of closing a chapter in, in Toy Story 3. Toy Story 4 is kind of seeing them kind of go their separate ways. Which is sad in its own right, you know, seeing like Woody literally like, you know, walk off into the sunset type of thing. You know, that kind of makes me sad. I don't right. know if I want a Toy Story 5, though. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and 5 is going to be, it's going to start with him turning around from the sunset and coming back. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, Especially if you have Tom Allen and Tom Hanks coming back. Tim Allen and Tom, uh, Tom Hanks coming back. You know that both characters are going to be in the film. And it's just kind of like. You know, unless Tom Hanks is only in it for like the beginning of it because you're just seeing him leave, or if they are gonna do like a dual story and you have what what Buzz is doing and what Woody's doing, and you know if that like lines up. But again, yeah, it, it comes down to writing. It comes down to if John Lasseter feels that it is worthy to put out. I, mm -hmm. I for the most part trust John Lasseter more than I trust Bob Iger when right. it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, unless John Lasseter is just doing it to please Bob Iger and he gave up on, uh, you know, the, his whole belief on we don't put out a movie unless it's as good as the last one. Right. Um, or they're going to open up the Toy Story multiverse and it's going to be variants of Woody and Buddy. I, I hope they don't do that. <laughs> I don't, we don't need that. I know that was a joke. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the last one being Disney's live action version of Moana. Will now be released on July 10th, 2026. Dwayne Johnson confirmed that aside from his reprisal as the character Maui, composer Lynn Manuel Miranda will be also returning to do the music for the second film. Uh, and I believe they cast uh, Moana, didn't they? Uh, for the an the Moana 2. Oh, that's right. For the animated. So not the live Which action. Which is coming out this year. They have Auli. Right. Uh, I forgot her last mm -hmm. name. But yeah, the, the original girl that played Moana is coming back for Moana 2. The like, live action Moana, yeah. they haven't announced yet. No. Is Dwayne coming back for Maui in the animated movie yeah. too? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's the final boss. And bot. then uh, the, the weird final thing bot. is that um, Lima Miranda, uh, I guess they're taking a departure from the, the first story because he's playing the uh, Polynesian messenger god. It's weird. What? Wait, what? <laughs> Give it a second. Phil. Playing. The, oh, okay. Yep. No, I got it. You got, I got it. it. You, I got the joke. Got I got the joke. It took All me. Right. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Again, long convoluted jokes. That's my. I'll, I'll you know, wait for somebody out. to explain it in the chat. Let's keep. Going. Uh, <laughs> he played <laughs> Hermes in. Um, and Percy Jackson. In Percy Jackson. He did play Hermes. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it took me a second. I was like, "Messenger God." Oh, uh, it's a hurry's joke. That's a hurry's joke. You got there. You're good. It took me a second. All right. Speaking of uh, grand journeys through uh, magical expanses, uh, seas, you could say, uh, to the dichotomy of two opposing forces, 
a longer time ago from a galaxy not so far away. Director James Mangold's Star Wars project, Dawn of the Jedi, has some updates. Mm. The story will take place 25,000 years before the events of the original trilogy, and it will focus on the birth of the Force. Hmm. THR has offered an update on the project and revealed that House of Cards creator Bo Willeman has come on board to co-write the story with Mangold. Uh, Willeman is no stranger to Star Wars, as he also wrote three episodes from Andor Season 1, which earned him an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Writing on a Drama Series. Oh, so, okay. So what I do mean, we think about the birth of the Force? I, I'm i into this. I, w- I want to see where... Yeah where they take this and i think it's going to be um something about like scientists or something or monks like find find how to tap into the force and then well they get corrupted or something like that yeah i mean yeah i don't know how because this is a new version of the story because in legends it was a whole it was monks or it was like basically these weird ships showed up on a bunch of planets and took people to Tython, which we saw in the Mandalorian, so we know it exists. Um, mm-hmm. But took people to Tython, and then there was kind of a wellspring of the Force. And so they were able to kind of yeah, tap into it for, for the first time. And then a while after that, there was a conflict where it was people who wanted <clears throat> to control the Force versus them who didn't want to, and it was like a whole thing. That was the divide. Um, but I wonder if uh, the Mortis gods are going to be involved in some way. Mm. You know? Because we already know that there was kind of the whole, uh, you know, because obviously we Mother saw Last da- Jedi, there was the whole... Father, right, daughter, yeah. Or, son. or the uh, father, daughter, son. Right. So we already know the Prime Jedi was a thing. Uh, and we know the Mortis gods, so I wonder if almost the Mortis gods that like they were the first force users or something. Could be, could be. And we have those like uh, carvings into the mountains on from, right, um, which are the Mortis gods. So which are the Mortis gods? Yeah. The force comes from a different galaxy or something. I like it. Let's, so, see, let's see what happens. I'm, yeah. I'm into it. So All right. What do you think? Oh, what do I think? Uh, I <laughs> it, it took a second for me to process that you guys were asking for my <laughs> for my my thoughts on this. No, I I I I think the first thought that comes to mind is, you know, the force was born. Was it not just already there? Right. I think, I, I think it. Well, no, no, I think no, no, it's no, no, no. I really think about it like, more so like when they discover that the force is a thing. right, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's it's as if like you know in our universe, you know, like a, a monk finally realizes that they can control the, the the elements, that kind of thing. Like you know, so right or like um, whatever the first you know firebender was or airbender or whatever. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. So like, yeah, yeah. I I, I kind of like the idea of this, but at the same time, I feel like it takes away the mystique of you know this Ooh, this good religion point. and kind of this uh uh this for lack of a better word force that lives within this universe right yeah and it's mm-hmm. like you know i like the idea of not knowing what it is and not knowing how yeah. it works 100 percent uh you know i i think it's actually as as much as it would have been kind of cool to see uh lucas's interpretation of star wars uh the the, the sequels where he explains midichlorians and all this other mm. stuff I feel like it's good that they didn't go that route and that there's, you know, there's still a level of mystery and mystique within the Star Wars universe. So, you know, um, the, the other thing is I, I kind of I trust James Mangold with uh, with his storytelling ability, you know, mm-hmm. and, and telling complex stories and everything like that. I just and, and, and again, like the, the writer from Andor uh, at this point yeah. to me, the dude can't do, do any wrong with the way he wrote Andor. Uh, he knows how to write complex layered stories. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So it's like I that that gives me faith in the way that they're going to play the story out. But it's one of those things where I feel like it, it's almost how my, uh, similar to my feeling with, you know, how I didn't want an origin story with the Joker. 
Mm -hmm. because I would prefer to look at the Joker as a monster and I don't need an explanation as to why he's a monster. Yeah. But you know, you know what's, what's nice about this is that bringing on another writer, it, it takes some responsibility off James yeah. Mangold. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, Hey, just go make a good movie. We'll make this happen. And I, you're right. Like in, like I could have, I could have just been satisfied with the words that Obi-Wan said in a new hope. Yeah, you know, like it binds us, it flows through us, that sort of thing. Right. You could have left it at that. I would have been so happy and and be okay with like the mystery of the force. But maybe we're just getting to the point where we need to tell more stories. Anyway. Yeah. Let's keep it going. On to some fantastic MCU news. Marvel. Fantastic. Marvel has cast Julia Gardner from Ozark and Inventing Anna. In the Fantastic Four, she will take on the role of Shalabal. Shalabal, yeah. Who is an incarnation of the Silver Surfer. The so, internet yeah. is exploding over this right now. Yeah, I, know, <laughs> I know. I know. It's weird. Like, why? Well, you don't need to go crazy over this. Don't they're going crazy. Well, they're going crazy because that's how misogyny works, right? Like, they would prefer that they get the male version that everybody's used to rather than going for a different variant of this character, even yeah. though we're in a variant universe. So it makes yeah. sense, right? Like there's, there's so many good reasons to do Shala ball and not do uh, the original uh, version of Fan uh, oh, was fantastic or the silver surfer. Um, I, I wasn't I, she I, like I, the wife of the silver surfer too. In I, I think in the main uh, mainstream universe, she, uh, she was his wife, uh, and then yeah. in an alternate universe, he dies and she becomes the Silver Surfer, the Herald. Mm. Yes. Remember, Galactus destroys their their, their planet, and mm -hmm. he's the lone survivor of his planet. Yeah, hmm. yep. All right. Uh, in the comics, Galactus has had several heralds. And these are individuals who are servants for the devourer of worlds. They scavenge the universe for desirable planets for their master to consume. And they signal his coming. <gasps> Dude, what if, what if he like finds like um, celestial planets? You know how we had the baby coming out of the ocean? Yeah. Ooh. Like what if he's like searching for these? Like highly, um, I don't know, power or, or energy within these planets, these eggs. It's Balut. He's looking for a celestial Balut. Galactus is. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to devour these He's celestial Balut eggs. <laughs> oh my God. No, dude. If you, remember back, if you remember back, right, what it's supposed to be, they're basically supposed to be like, like celestials or essentially maggots, dude. Like basically what they do. <laughs> They are. They are. You, if, if you if you really think about the way that they describe what celestials are, how they're born, they're born in a planet and they consume the planet with a, that they're born into. The yeah. idea of that celestial, that's the, the, the baby that's coming out of the ocean, was had it been allowed to gestate, gestate and, and, and become what it was supposed to, it was supposed to eat Earth. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Galactus is a good guy. You know, what I mean, space maggots. Yeah, yeah. Coming it's it's like when you put it in that up. context, you know, immediately he's like, "Oh my god, they are space maggots." <laughs> <laughs> I think Galactus is just Filipino, and he wants to eat all this cosmic balut. Oh my god! What if, they, what, if, what if they cast somebody Filipino to play him? Oh, give me like no, 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 Bear Grylls because maggots because space maggots. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's good. <laughs> like, what if they just like hired a Pinoy to play? Like, what if they got Joe Coy to play him? Yeah, right. <laughs> we need Joe Coy. Right? And Joe Coy is just like and, and you and what if Joe Coy played him hella Pinoy, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Where is my Sandrigal? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a uh do you have soy sauce for this uh this uh earth this I celestial balut? <laughs> Putang in amo, I need my shoyu. <laughs> <laughs> Get me San Miguel. 
The movie is set in the 1960s and will be directed by Matt Shackman from a screenplay by Josh Friedman, who was brought on to rewrite the script originally written by Jeff Kaplan and Ian Springer. Both of those not Filipino enough, so <laughs> that's the problem. It's fantastic. You know the team, they won't make him Filipino. <laughs> Travesty. Fantastic Four will hit theaters on July 25th, 2025. Absolutely. Uh, again, I think it's, a, I, I said it before, I'm just reiterating it. I think that it's a great move to do Shallow Ball. Um, yep. And uh, I mean, again, I like it when they do different incarnations of characters and not do the uh, original ones because you're still honoring the comics. You're still right. looking at like, kind of like, you know, how all that goes. I mean, look at Ant-Man, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, and they, and they still integrated the original storylines. They just did it later out later on. Right. You know, you can do, uh, there's an iteration where the Silver Surfer, because there's there's different versions of it, but like, I think the most common one actually is Silver Surfer is the Herald of Galactus because he's protecting his planet. Mm Because Galactus, you're my Herald, then I won't eat your planet. Uh, So, you know, in this version, Shala Ball is the one that, that, that took on the powers rather than her husband. Right. Hmm. Cool. All right, let's keep it going. All right, so speaking of fantastic news, following the casting news that Julia Garner will play the Shalabala version of Silver Surfer in Marvel's The Fantastic Four, a new report has surfaced confirming that Galactus will indeed be the main villain. And he will be played by Joe Coy. (laughs) (laughs) He will be played by your Tito. (laughs) He is played by Tito, Tito James. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) The news comes from Deadline's Justin Kroll, who shared on X, that's funny, seemed obvious given Silver Surfer's involvement, but yes, Galactus is expected to be the main villain, and that role is currently open with no one in talks or holding, or holding offer, holding offer for role? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, With with no one in talks or holding offers for the role. That uh, I will be holding the offer for the role. we have um, heard that Javier Bardem is in talks, but there is no confirmation yet. So who would you like to see cast as Galactus? I don't think you need to answer that question because you already have. Or, or you know who we do it? <laughs> you know who we get to do it? Lou Diamond Phillips. <sighs> exactly. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Personally, I think uh, Lisa Power Cosmic would, would be pretty good, but you know. Lisa <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <yeah. laughs> We said not power g- g- cosmic. <laughs> I have the power that's cosmic. <laughs> oh, I'm going to make your planet into Sisig. <laughs> make your uh, Jupiter into uh, a double. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's keep it. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is awful. Oh God! I was yeah, trying right. to figure out what I was gonna write James's joke into, and I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm offended at my own jokes. Uh, is... <laughs> as as you should never be. I make so many span like like Hispanic jokes. Should not be. Should not be. <laughs> you know, jokes at all. <laughs> oh God! All right, moving on, ladies and gentlemen. This next one will quench your Marvel thirst. Oh, all right. Ooh. As fans have spotted over the past few weeks, Coca-Cola is now being packaged in special Marvel cans. Coke and Marvel officially announced the scope of the partnership, which will result in the promotion across multiple platforms. According to Coke, that includes extensive television and social media advertising using a new comic book themed commercial. All right. Sounds very exciting, and I'm very excited about it. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the new cans will feature a total of 38 Marvel superheroes between Coca-Cola and Coke Zero. Uh, Coke Zero Sugar uh, products. I always forget that they changed it to Coke Zero Sugar. Um, in total, 33 <laughs> heroes will be featured in 38 designs across the products. On Coke bottles and cans, fans will be able to find designs featuring Blade, Cable, Colossus, Daredevil, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Elektra, Juggernaut, Kingpin, Loki, Moon Knight, Wolverine, Deadpool, Nick Fury, Storm, only in the United States, Super Scroll, and War Machine. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Now, those ones are only on regular Coke. So 
on Coke Zero bottles and cans. Coke drinkers will find designs featuring Ant-Man, Black Panther, Black Widow, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, Groot, Hulk, Iron Man, uh, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, Rocket, Scarlet Witch, Shang-Chi, Star-Lord, Thanos, and Thor. So I may, be, I, I, I may have to spike the diabetes just to get a Deadpool can. <laughs> there doesn't Coke seem Zero. to be a like delineation at all. Like I thought maybe, oh, normal Coke is, you know, the Avengers or something. And Coke oh, Zero like is other theme? people. Right. Yeah, there's yeah. not really a theme, which I, yeah. Huh. Well, I do see that. The mutants are on the regular Coke cans. Right, right, but there's also Loki. There is also Loki. And Moon Knight. And you know? Moon Knight. Yeah, Kingpin. And Nick Fury. It's like, okay. <laughs> Technically, Daredevil's not a mutant. I mean, he can, I mean, you could consider him a mutate with the way that he got his powers. <laughs> right, but still. Hmm, good point. Yeah. Like, I mean, right. if you, huh? Coke Zero has pretty much... Just MCU, right? I yeah. well, they're all kind of technically MCU, I guess. But well, I mean, in yeah. all technicality, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't see any characters here that have not featured in a movie in the MCU so far, or well, or, or or something. Yeah, that has been canonized retroactively too. And that's why I'm saying, like, you know, Deadpool is is considered MCU. Like both the first two movies are considered right. MCU. So that's where we we get. Cable Colossus, not Negasonic. Yeah, right. right. Um, Super Scroll. It would have been funny TV show. Well, but it's still MCU. Yeah. It's the whole thing is everything is MCU. The, what would have been funny though is if they do only villains for the normal Coke and then only heroes for the Zero. Yeah, uh, because you know. because <laughs> Coke Zero is the one that makes you a hero. Right. See, there you go. <laughs> and that's the tagline. It's it's brilliant. <laughs> Coke Zero makes you a hero. Each, there you go. There it is. Each of the cans will include QR codes enabling an AR experience, as Coke officially calls calls it, or <clears throat> Coke officials call it, okay. where fans will be able to compete to compete various prizes, including the ultimate fan experience, Disney Cruise, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Disney Cruise, Marvel movie screenings, collectible influencer boxes. Movie tickets, autograph memorabilia, Disney Plus subscriptions, and more. Damn. All right. Uh, so They're also enabling diabetes. So how about yeah, very much, very much. I uh, I noticed actually. So uh, every now and then, I will just like open up Twitter just to see what's going on in there. Because mm -hmm. I try to stay away from or X, I guess is what it is. I try to stay away from it as much as possible. But um, I opened it up the other uh, like earlier today, and actually, it's the first thing that popped up right here. Koi Janjiro from used to be new with new rock stars now. I forgot. The right. other. He uh, is has it, his it's cup uh, has real rejects, isn't it? Right. He's on everything. Uh, but I mean, like, yeah. yeah, it's got it's got Wolverine and Deadpool on, on the cup. And the and, and, and the other thing is uh Wolverine's whole thing on there is it's him with the mask on. Oh that's like I think that's like the first take of what he looks like with the mask on because we haven't seen him in any of the ads with the with the mask on yet. Mm -hmm. I think the only other thing we've seen with the mask on was um there was a uh there was a um a uh, uh god what is it called uh promo art. Oh, all right. Yeah. Very cool. And you know what else uh, also may want uh, may make you want to have a mask on all the time. It's the fact that we have merch, people. <laughs> oh, I wasn't ready for this. Ladies and gentlemen, we got merch, people. <laughs> and no, we're not selling a disconcerting mask yet. I'm waiting for James to say the line. We got a hat. No, we don't. No. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> we don't so have a hat. hat. We have. <laughs> we don't have hat anymore. <laughs> we lost the hat. You uh, left no, the no, back we, window open. We, we, we lost the truck. S at some point. Now we've lost the whole word. No. So uh, we don't have hat anymore because hat was given to Ming Chen. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So, so. 
so um little context on that whole thing right on friday when we got in um cam was like showing people around like he was showing the guests around you know showing everybody where they were at and whatnot and mm -hmm. he was decked out in distance nerding gear mm -hmm. and so he's uh at the cam thanks for repping yeah. at least somebody yes. does young phil right and so I, I was wearing distance nerding all weekend so uh so he okay. uh he he uh takes ming to his table and ming goes dude that hat is badass right oh, nice. and so cam tells me he goes dude he really liked my hat and i was like okay well i've got one heather gray one left so i'm gonna give the, i'm gonna give it to him i gave him that and then i didn't have the black shirt in his size so i gave him one of the character shirts mm. oh that's cool and he kind of hey. marked a little bit because he was like dude this hat is sick as fuck and he goes uh remind me i have to give you one of my hats but uh he's gonna give me a heather gray shared universe hat oh that's nice. awesome because i gave him a heather gray distance nerding hat uh and then when he looked at the shirt because i was like that's the only one i got man uh in your size is their character shirt he goes those characters look dope though man i'm, I'm I, i'd totally wear that nice nice yeah so ming uh i gave him the shirt and the, and the hat so we no longer have hat okay all right i mean if 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 we're gonna get rid of a hat that's the way to get rid of a hat so shout out to cam thanks for doing that right, shout out so, to ming so, such right, a cool so, guy you know if if you want hat track down ming Chen. That's exactly the <laughs> he might have it for hat, wait for us to make more of them because eventually we will <laughs> right. he, he might give you a give you the hat at a discount yeah. who knows you know yeah or you know an upcharge we'll see Exactly. We're, we're, we're going to be seeing Ming a lot over the next year because he's trying to go to more mm. Gloucester uh, cons. I like it. But until then, uh, we got shirts, so you can be like Ming, be like Cam, be like me wearing the shirt as well, not be like young Phil who's not be, wearing yes, a shirt. Yes, be unlike Phil. Yeah. Um, we got shirts. All you got to do is DM us at Distance Nerding on Instagram. Let us know what size you're looking for, how many you're looking for. They're 20 bucks if you're local or 25 if we got to ship it to you. Um, we have a good amount of sizes. Yeah, good. Uh, we have a good amount. The black ones were starting to get we a out, We ran out of mediums. I know we ran out of XL for, ah. the, uh, for the character shirts. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So gotcha. we're uh, we're starting to run low on sizes. I've got to do inventory. The other thing is we just got a square system and it and it keeps track of our inventory. So uh, right. yeah, I've got to I've got to like redo our inventory. Sweet. Right. So if you're interested, just DM us at Distance Nerding on Instagram, and we'll work it out with you. We'll get and we're gonna get in some new stickers. So shout out to Eugene. He's getting us some new stickers. Those are coming like in the next week or two. But fun stuff. I like all it. the new stickers. All right, let's talk schedule. All right, so let's schedule. Well, the schedule is back to what it what what, what our normally regular schedule is. Uh, I didn't do a game stream yesterday because I was driving. I didn't get home until like eleven last night. Uh, mm -hmm. But we will be going back to game streams on Mondays from eight to twelve. Uh, our regular show, uh, six thirty to eight thirty. The download, the show you're watching right now, uh, and then of course on Thursdays we will be doing um, the build. Uh, so we'll be continue continuing that, uh, having all of our fun. You know, uh, if you if you're unfamiliar with the build, uh, I build Lego on stream while we talk to fun guests and uh, talk nerdy stuff and do brackets and, and top tens and stuff like that. So uh, join in right now. We're doing uh, best uh, best films that include dinosaurs, which was my idea. So yeah. I just got a message right now. That said, no, like your mother is in Oklahoma, so be on your best behavior. Oh, That's boy. Funny. Look <laughs> out. Yeah, she was supposed to get home around midnight, and it's yeah. uh, almost 11 here. So, Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it, it tracks. She'll probably be home right yeah. around then. We'll be fine. We'll Love be. it. Good. All right. So, uh, yeah, is that it for the do. Yeah, that's it. We don't uh, need to do anything. Yeah, no, we, we don't. We, we don't. We don't need to talk about Chidu's pluggables. You know, it's just, it's... Whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. Hold <laughs> on. Thanks <laughs> and keep. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Chidu, what are your pluggables, sir? 
I am SSGU Studios. <clears throat> I am SSGU Studios here on YouTube and on Instagram. I do short films, music, world building, and other nerdy stuff. I am also on Frey's channel, who is not currently here, but will be here in I don't know, about an hour. Uh, we have a series <laughs> called Classified, where we take your favorite pop culture characters and place them into their respective D&D &D classes. We also have a companion series called Journals of the Classes, where we go through each of the D&D classes and their subclasses. Uh, we will have a new episode of Classified and or Journals Classes coming out at some point. I'm still editing them. <laughs> but, uh, and it uh, if it's a Classified, it will be on... Uh, Classified, I think it will be... Actually, I don't know yet, because we have not filmed all of season two. But uh, if it's Journal of the Classes, which it probably will be, it will be on Sorcerer. So, I like uh, I'm also in the Distance Learning Sphere, as you can tell. I am on the Download on Tuesdays, the mm -hmm. very show you are watching right now. The Build mm -hmm. on Thursdays. And mm -hmm. I am on Kyber K for the Saturday Morning Nerd Out, which will actually be coming back this Saturday. Ooh. Uh, and now for the New Order. Yeah, they, they they waited until I went back to work to go back on uh and do that show again. <laughs> you had all this time, nothing. <laughs> the, the, the week, the week that it happens. Yeah. Exactly. And literally the week I went back to work. They're like, uh, all right, we're 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 going back. Right. Yeah, no, screw that guy, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Awkward. Have something you want to discuss? Tell us what you're nerding out on and make sure to let us know in the Facebook group, the Distance Nerdington Post. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support us in the best way possible, all you got to do is head over to distancenerding.com, use or go up to the top, hit that button that says buy us a taco, and you can buy us a taco. Uh, join the taco party, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Be as cool as everybody else that supports this show. If you want to support us, uh, it, it helps us get better prizes. It helps us get uh, uh, do more events, live events, and everything like that. As of right now, uh, we are in the middle of a giveaway for the uh, Batman Bat Cycle uh, Lego kit, uh, which is worth uh, nice. worth eighty dollars. Um, that kit again. All you got to do if you want to join in on that. Uh, if you're not already following us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram. Uh, like the post. There's a reel that's uh, under our, our our posts right there. Like the post, uh, and then tag two friends in the comments, and then hit done. Uh, we've already got a crap ton of people that have uh, yeah. entered into this. Uh, mm. But this month is going to be that um, that Lego Batman uh, Bat Cycle next month. Uh, I believe I'm planning on giving away uh, the new Lego Stitch. Ooh. What? Really? Yeah. yeah. We were just talking about that. You're going to give it away? I'm, well, I'm going to I'm going to do one for myself. Oh, one. I was going to say. Yeah. I was going to say. That's a that's a really cool set, though. Um, yeah. By the way, speaking of tacos, shout out to Julie. She's our mother-in-law. She sends us tacos like every month. She's super cool. Love her to death. Shout out to Julie. Uh, just want to say we love you. Appreciate you. Right, young young fellow. She's she's our, our mother in law. <laughs> yes, our I, I was I was actually gonna bring that up. I was like, did you just say our mother in law? Yeah, right. Come on, <laughs> we're family. We're family. Come on. Uh, I would say that Julie also loves you, so that's fine. There you go. Exactly. Shut up and take my money. All right, but she so should connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok. <laughs> Threads, YouTube, Discord, MySpace, Vine, Jew Cities, Friendster, Second Life, AIM, Farmers Only, Christian Mingle, and she should not connect with us on OnlyFans. Unless yeah. she really wants to. I mean, whatever. If she right. wants to. Remember, OnlyFans is just pictures of Aaron Watson's feet and mandals, of the beard, and Jamez's glasses ever so delicately sitting on a table. Found and it. potentially now his luscious locks. Luscious, luscious, luscious locks. Thanks for uh, noticing my haircut. All right. Uh, at, at, at Distance Nerding. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like to like us to break up with your boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, pet, schoolyard bully, annoying neighbor, or just tell us how much you enjoy us, hate us, or wish the internet would consume us completely as if they were Galactus uh, maggoting himself out of a... <laughs> out of, uh, send, wow. us an, <laughs> send us an wow. email. <laughs> you like that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> At dist. Galactus is Filipino. 
right? Yeah, because <laughs> he eats planets like Balut. Yeah, he's just want to crack well, open a, know, a cosmic, so- cosmic <laughs> Balut. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> does does Galactus ever need like a straw? You know, Ooh, no, you just slurp it. You just pick up the planet and slurp it. Slurp it. Oh, you slurp it. It's like, Real okay. Filipinos yeah. eat their duck fetuses <laughs> like raw. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, well, I and mean, you slurp, you slurp the juice. I, I hope they at least put like salt on it or something. Come on. Oh yeah, you put some soy sauce on it. That's how you do. Yeah, Show you on everything. You, you know what? Anything, anything is good with soy sauce on it. So there, I'll yeah. give you that. Yeah. I'll give you that. And snorting at aol.com, and we will read your emails directly on the show all right well ladies and gentlemen that is it from us thanks and keep nerding together nerding right. together. it is time for the dance <laughs> party and i absolutely love today's show let's uh <laughs> this The DeLongs are in the I chat. So. I was talking about Palpatine farts earlier. Palpatine boots. Distance nerding. That's not how you hold a baby. Everybody next, so